Hey, Good evening, yeah, go ahead. ladies and gentlemen. Now that it is 6 p.m. on Monday, April 9th, 2018, I'll call to order the Board of Selectmen's meeting. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is an appointment to the Board of Registrars, and the appointment is for Karen Saladino. So if you just want to have a seat, introduce yourself, and give us a little quick background. Um, Karen Saladino, I've been living here for over 30 years, almost. Well, 25 years, sorry. Done a lot of volunteer work here in Webster with the schools and soccer and Girl Scouts, and I'd um, like to be involved a little bit more. So. And what is the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the appointment. Is there any discussion? Thanks for stepping up. Thank you. Yeah. And Jen, will you pull the board? Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Millen? Yes. Selectman Dukkevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Selectman yes. Jolda? Yes. Next item on the agenda is an appointment to the planning board for an associate member, Kathy Hill. Introduce yourself, give us a little quick background. I'm Kathy Cody. Uh, I've been in town here for 36 years or so. Um, I've always volunteered with my kids through the school systems and their sports and their music and have volunteered in various committees at work and in the community. Um, and I'm interested in helping out with the planning board right now. What is the pleasure of the board? Make motion to approve. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve the appointment. Is there any discussion? Thank you again for stepping up. Hearing no other discussion, generally we hold the board. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dubkevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolda? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we did have a request to take one item out of order. We're looking to have. Uh, it's still downstairs, so uh, let's do the next one and then we'll just give it back. Yeah. All right, so we want to open up the public hearing for one of the mayors. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself due to a potential conflict of interest. Wait, is there a motion to open up the public hearing? So moved. Second, third. We have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. Is there any discussion? If not, generally, we pull the board for the opening of the public hearing. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dubkevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Recuse. Chairman Jolda? Yes. First, we'll hear from the representatives from waterfront areas. Hi, my name is Pat Racine. I represent Nash Icon 98.9. I'm here on behalf of an event that we do at Waterfront Marys called Rock the Dog. <coughs> we've been doing this for 18 seasons, and we've been doing it every year from 5 to 7. And this year, we have a little bit of a situation where Adam Webster, who's on Morning Town, who's been doing it, he's a big, big advocate of the Diabetes Foundation, and they offered him a position, a full-time position, um, and the position was supposed to be 7.30 to 5, but because Adam is on the air with us until 9 o'clock, he can't make it there till 9.30. So because of that, they've already kind of helped, you know, let him go in later. He won't be able to make it over to Waterfront Mary's until probably about 5.30. So we we're asking if you guys could grant us, you know, um, a new time frame that we kick this off from 5.30 to 7.30 so we can maintain having Adam there. Any questions? I mean, everybody knows what Rock the Duck is. It's like an after work party for two hours. We play some games, we play some music, and we have an officer that comes down every week to make sure the parking's under control, the music's under control, and it's just a lot of fun, you know. Is there any questions from the board, from the board members? Anyone on the 
And as this is a public hearing, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak in regards to the public hearing for Waterfront Marys? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the operation of hours for Rock the Dock from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Is there any discussion? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I just reviewing all of this, I mean, I have nothing personally against waterfronts. I know that over the years there's been some situations there. Um, and you get a half an hour, I mean, one way or another, that's not a big deal. I guess what I'm reading is the other, because we do have a uh, noise bylaw in town. I think that was voted in October, roughly four years ago, roughly, mm -hmm. give or take a year. And sometime it goes on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you have roughly a 100 yard radius from the point of origin. And the original permit would say that the music would be facing the building. And I know that we even have a resident or two in here that say, hey, the half hour, no big deal. I'm just wondering, are there any, because sometimes I can hear it over at my house, and I'm across the lake, I'm roughly a mile away. Um, depending on the wind, understand that, understand about the water and carrying all the sound. But if I lived, say, within 100 yards, and you can't talk on the phone to anybody because the noise is too loud, what precautions would you take to try to quell that situation? Well, honestly, um, when you're um, saying Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I don't, it's, is it, are we talking inside or outside? Because my acoustic is Saturday and Sunday, and I know several of you people have been there, and we, yes, do it on Saturday and Sunday, but we're always done by 7.30. We've never even taken this past 7.30, so I don't know where a Friday night is coming in, and I was under the understanding, and I did place a phone call to um, check the minutes because it was for the days from 11 to 7.30, and that's why if we did try it on a Thursday night last year, the guy came in at 7.30. It was brought back inside, so I really did everything everybody asked. And I have done everything everybody has asked. I mean, I think technically I'm, I'm under a lot more scrutiny than a lot of other places. And I really don't know why. I've cooperated. I've done everything I can. I mean, this is still an establishment that's been there for 118 years. You're going to have dissatisfied certain neighbors, which I would think would be taken into consideration, but I mean, I don't feel we have gotten a lot of complaints from various neighbors. It's only been a certain few. So I, 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 we do face the building as far as our music. We do not project it out to the lake, but sound does travel on the lake. Yeah, and even if somebody's playing a radio next door to your house, you're going to hear it. This is a barn. I, need to make money and like she said like i'm rock the docks you know how many pe people come into the town and they patronize like other restaurants and the gas stations and you know i i mean i've done everything everybody's asked one of the things that she had talked to me about was that she was asked to hire a police officer to be there on wednesday night and i i'm there almost every wednesday and i can tell you i go out and i talk to the officer out there and i always say to him, how are things going is this great i said is the music too loud He'll tell me no. And I'll say, have you had anybody call? And he'll say, yeah, I've had one call, or sometimes they have two calls. But the majority of the time, all the people that come there, you know, 18 years is a long time to be doing it on that lake. And we're just asking you guys to let us continue it. It's, you know, we're done by 7.30. It's, you know, we were doing it 5 to 7, right at 7 o'clock, we were shut down, we were shut off. And we were gone, the DJ was gone, he had, he had to get home, and now, you know, at 7.30, we'll have that thing shut off. You know, one day a week. The, re the reason, if I may, that I, I, I brought this up, this has been since before you, way before you. Um, 
and I'm not picking on you, by the way. My great grand uncle was one of the owners of that before Waterfront, so there you go. Uh, before the wires. So, but the idea of it is, I just want to make sure because some of those neighbors have since moved, and since then there's been some families that have moved in with kids. And my big, my thing is just safety. The noise would then come in second because in case there is an emergency down there, we want to make sure an emergency vehicle does have access to get there. That's basically what I'm trying so to say. So we have the officer there, and you know, we were, as far as I know, we've never had any issues or any problems, and you know, even though there is alcohol, mm -hmm. sir, we've never had any problems down there. You know, the event, if there was, I can tell you, my boss would be down there, and he would, he would shut, shut down the event immediately if there was any ever, any issues. And, 18 years, I don't think we've ever had a problem with anything. And the people are very friendly. The format is now country music. You know, um, we're playing you know, the old country, the new country. You know, and I just, I don't know if you guys are country music fans, but the country music fans, it's like a big family. You know, everybody gets I can hear Indian them. Ranch in my house too. Can you Indian mind? Ranch, yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of good shows coming this year. <laughs> just so you know. Tracy, uh, so, on, on the weekends, it's only acoustical music. Is that correct? It's not. It's not amplified at all. Is that? Well, we have guitar players. I mean, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No drums. No, nothing loud like that. Of course. Right. And and rock of the dock is the only time that it's it amplified. Is that correct? Well, yes. We, we play music. Right. We play the stick. We play music. But it's not constant because. You know, we're stopping and we're playing games and the DJ's interacting <coughs> with the crowd and, you know, giving away prizes that will play a few songs. And sometimes, sometimes we have had live bands down there. You know, they play on the upper deck and we always make sure that we check with the officer outside to make sure that the volume of the band is good. And there's been times where she's come out and said, we turn it down. And I was like, but the officer said it was okay. No, turn it down. And the bands will cooperate and they'll turn it down. But generally, that's only like one band. We've cut it back to like one band a season. But when you're talking amplified, I mean, if they got to have a speaker. You're yeah. not going to hear that. I mean, you can't send a guy out there with no speaker and expect him to play while people are talking, boats are racing by and everything. So I don't know it's what's that. That's just acoustic with, you know. Yeah. And it, but it's not an electric guitar. On no, the God no. Okay. okay. Yeah. And the bands that were referenced, which I had just found out some discussion the other day, um, they would be inside. But again, I can't take electric, so there would never be electric. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> I can't take noise. Maybe yeah, like Metallica. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my type bands. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? Although I like to bring Metallica. Yeah, it's a pretty great place. <laughs> so, hearing no other discussion, and we have a motion and a second to approve. Jen, will you pull the board? Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dovkevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Oh, recuse okay. Chairman Jolda. Yes. Motion to close the public hearing. So move second. With motion and second to close the public hearing. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Jen, will you pull the board? Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dovgevich? Yes. Chairman Jolter? Yes. Thank you. Does that mean yes? Yes. Oh. You guys gonna come down? I'll continue to be on my best behavior. <laughs> Otherwise, you know what happens. We'll be out. We'll be Thank you all. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, can we do the uh, FY17 audit now? Absolutely. Tony Roselli, he, uh, he, he was stepped here, in. he stepped out. He, he stepped out. Uh, it's like in Becker. Oh, here they go. Okay. Tony, we're ready for you. is just turning the heat down. <laughs> Perfect.
If anyone would like a copy of the management letter, I've got a few extra copies here. Tony, I'll let you just kick us off okay. and uh, go over the management letter. Um, but I just wanted to quickly say uh, how much I appreciate Tony. Tony has been always available to answer my phone calls and uh, to help us out to figure out the right way to handle some of these issues. And uh, they've been a great asset to us and appreciate them and look forward to working with them for the next several years. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, so um, this is kind of a, an unusual situation because we did 16 and 17 so close to each other, it almost seemed like we never left. Uh, 16 was very late and 17 was very early in uh, municipal terms. So uh, we did spend quite a bit of time in Webster from May uh, to September. It seemed like we were here every other week uh, having conversations and communications and whatnot. Um, and the really interesting thing about it that really makes it unique is the fact that the two years couldn't have been any different. Uh, in 16, there were a lot of problems, a lot of material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, findings. Um, and I think our being here all summer and constantly talking about it and in meetings and, and trying to get through these issues helped 17 because within 90 days, things, it was like two different towns. You had we walked into a town that everyone was fighting each other, people were arguing, things weren't getting done, departments that are supposed to be reconciling weren't on speaking terms, so they weren't reconciling. And then all of a sudden, everybody came together and said, we've got to make this work. Department of Revenue's landed, a new auditor's landed. Uh, what's going to happen if we don't make this work? And the town, I think, was very successful. It was um, really uh, amazing to watch how we sat down, and finally pushed through and got it done uh, in 17. So uh, what I want to do first is just go through so we can, um, if everyone has the management letter, I'm on page two, and we can just kind of go through the whole thing. Uh, on the front end of this uh, overview, which is on page two, in the beginning we talk about some of the problems from 16. I don't want to repeat all those. Uh, but further down we talk about what's, what's improved and, and what's better. Uh, now, and uh, we can go through bullet by bullet of what was in last year's management letter that's been improved, and then we'll go through what is was still an issue in 17, and talk about what the town's plan is for those items that are still an issue. Um, so down the bottom, uh, as I've already discussed, the first bullet is just the overall team approach. Uh, very good. Uh, it's a great case study on how to really come together and just get things done when your backs are against the wall. And I think everybody involved in that process should be congratulated because uh, I, I didn't think it was possible. The state didn't think it was possible. But we got in here in September. We got the audit done. Uh, we got the, the balance sheet got done. The free cash got certified. No problems with the tax recap, the Schedule A. Everything on schedule, on time. Nothing was late. So um, you know, gr great job, guys. Uh, and that's basically the, f the first comment. Second comment, we'll get into some of the, um, the, the findings. So the receivable collection reconciliations, which were way off in 16, are down to a handful of minor items. So we took it out of what's called material weakness. Material weakness is the most severe of the findings. And just put it down in what's called a deficiency, which is just a regular finding. So you've gone from material weakness to just a deficiency. And I expect that to continue to improve so that at the end of 18, it'll be more, it'll be more under control. Um, the next two talk about just the submitting the, the reports on time. We don't have to repeat that. Uh, cash reconciliations were, the entire variance was down to less than $3,000 and it was made up of a number of just little small items. Uh, the group in here helping uh, the town right now, the Kinsheriff group, uh, has indicated to Doug that those should be adjusted before the next audit is over. But again, another great improvement on uh, getting your cash in balance. Uh, capital projects. Uh, one of the things that was, that caused this to be a material weakness was the fact that you had not managed the MSBA 
project, which is your school project, uh, effectively, so it caused a deficit. Uh, because there was a deficit and it wasn't cured through a reimbursement, it cost the town about $80,000 a year, I think it is, in interest, because when you finally went to borrow, it was outside of the borrowing range, so you had to go into a different type of bond uh, to uh, get that done. Uh, the deficit was cured, the town did a ban, um, and um, so, so the most severe part of that is, is done. Uh, we can talk about capital, uh, pro we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later because there's some surpluses and deficits we need to talk about. Um, so next bullet point is the personal property exemption. And we're happy that the assessor uh, did support that. So here we're talking about like these bills for $16, $8, $12 that, that are really not doing anything except sitting on your ledger because nobody bothers to pay them. They're the hardest ones to go collect because you can't put a tax lien on them. And you're not gonna take people to small claims court over $16 or $32. <clears throat> so the state recognized that and they allow you to exempt up to $10,000 $10, of taxable value. The town uh, voted to do 4,000. So I thought that was a good move. It'll create some efficiencies in the collector's office. And you can ask questions as I go. Um, Formal fi financial policies and procedures uh, were approved last month by your board, so that's all, that's all um, been corrected at this point. That was a finding last year. Tony, uh, on that one, if I could, through the chair, um, I would just like to thank the Finance Committee for all their work on it. I know Sarah, in particular, did uh, a lot of work on that, because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have even you know, gotten to the point of getting those policies to the selectmen, so certainly thank, yeah, thank and them. I, and I echo that completely. They did great. Yeah, and that's a big step. That's, that's not an easy task. I thought that was gonna take a couple of years to pull together. So uh, again, congratulations on doing that in a very expedient uh, fashion so that you can have those in place to, uh, for, uh, for 19 years. No, now we just have to follow them, so. You have to inform, follow <laughs> them and enforce them. That's what I'll be looking for next. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you get a manager letter comment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah Doug, page eight, <laughs> paragraph three. You didn't follow that one. Um, but anyhow, uh, homeless transportation, which is a, uh, a grant you receive from the state, uh, that was um, being accounted for improperly. That was corrected at the end of 17. Uh, your recreation revolving fund, uh, again, there's a number of different legislations that you can adopt for recreation revolving, and the one the town was operating under was not the one that the legislation, they didn't match up. So that was fixed at uh, the town meeting. Now the revolving fund does match the legislation. <clears throat> uh, there were some issues with waterways improvement, sort of the same sort of um, housekeeping type of things in, as the last two comments. Those were fixed also. Uh, police detail. So with police detail, what happens is you're paying, you're paying the offices before you receive. The officer goes out, does a detail. The town bills the customer. The officer gets paid, the money hasn't come in yet. So what happens is it creates a deficit in that account. The deficit should always equal the amount that's <coughs> owed, that's owed. So those two should match. So that reconciliation should be done at the end of the year. Uh, that had never been done. So um, when we went to ask for a report in the previous year, they said they could only run it on June 30th because the system in place purges the dates as you go. When you go into July 1st, now June 30th, you can't go back and get June 30th as a standalone. So the recommendation we made was to run the report on June 30th or July 1st, have it available, uh, which they did, and we were able to balance those accounts out. <coughs> uh, the only issue remaining on police details is we noticed in the listing of what's owed, there were some very old accounts. So I would like the, uh, the police department uh, the uh, office administrator there kind of go through and determine what is what is collectible and what is not collectible and then those would have to be abated and I believe is it a strong strong chief or weak? Strong, strong, strong chief. Strong. It's a strong chief so they can basically abate it at, yeah. at their level. Uh, cable peg access again the town was running it as a receipts reserve, but they didn't have the legislation in place. So that got taken care of at the July 
uh, 17 town meeting. Uh, Saw receivables, there were some issues on that. That all got corrected in, uh, by the end of 17. And finally, there were no prior period adjustments. So when we came in last year, we had to do a bunch of prior period adjustments that related to the prior audit. Uh, we didn't have to um, for uh, 17. So any questions on <coughs> this impressive list of improvements? Yeah, I, I, again, through the chair, I wouldn't, don't have questions as much as uh, kudos, you know, to Doug and, and the team, because um, I was amazed at how much had gotten done as well. Um, and to then not have a lot of new items come up um, and to have a much shorter list and management letter <coughs> comments is uh, a tribute to, I think, to all the hard work that was done, so. No, oh, thank you, and um, it was definitely a team approach. The, the finance team has been meeting every other week where we address a lot of these issues. Um, you know, and even uh, the town accountant, we didn't renew the contract. I think that was a good choice. But <coughs> before she left, she was able to complete a lot of these things. So I, I do want to give credit due where it, it is due. Uh, but uh, the finance team has uh, made great strides to accomplish some of these. And uh, we look forward to finishing the rest before the end of the fiscal year 18. Can we get some water back there? Oh, sure. In the water store. <laughs> yeah, that was imported, so it's okay. Thank you. And this is new. This I just did this entire presentation for the audit committee. <coughs> yes. <so>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to break. All right. So on the next page, page five, we talk about um, the level of findings. <coughs> so the most severe being material weakness. The second most severe is significant deficiency. And the least most uh, severe is just the regular deficiency. So last year there were six material weaknesses with the 16 on it. Uh, this year there's only one, and we'll talk about that one in a second. Uh, we didn't call anything a significant deficiency. And some of the comments that were not corrected got reduced from material weakness to, to uh, deficiency. So that's just there as an informational tool just to help you identify what's <coughs> really important and, um, and, and has to be addressed and what's more of a, an item that is not as much of a priority. But the town really took on every item with, with the same vigor. Next, um, again, this is informational. <coughs> and we have talked about this just in the, uh, in the other room, uh, that this is a logical next step, is just to look at what the town has for protection and uh, are there vulnerabilities in your system? Are you, are, um, are you um, protected from cyber attacks? And what we talked about is the fact that there are companies out there that do security audits that will come in and look at if there are any cracks in your firewall or if there are any uh, issues that need to be addressed. Um, so talked about that with, with the audit committee and with Doug, and, and I think this is something you guys are gonna work on. Yeah, even one of the members of the finance committee volunteered to, uh, has done similar work in the past, so she'll help us address, uh, look at some of our deficiencies, and then we can hire a company to do an overall audit of our uh, municipal data. You get through the chair. I mean, just the, what was mentioned in the audit committee too was that it's uh, Greg Robert does a great job in what he does for the town, um, and this is just another thing on top of that right. that we have to look at. Um, so, getting some outside help would make sense. This is a real specialty area to look at. And, and this is something that you would do in, in um, if you did get a report, mm -hmm. you do it in the executive session. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to tell everyone where our deficiencies are. <laughs> give, <them are>. <laughs> give them the blueprint. <laughs> Steal our money this way. <laughs> um, so next, uh, and this is a, a great um, informational item for the new town accountant that's coming on board. Uh, I understand he ha has CPA experience or is a CPA. And the Mass General Law allows the only individual that can go into any department and access information uh, on demand is the town accountant under one of the Mass General Laws. Um, 
So what I thought was a great, uh, a, a great item to add to the bucket list was to start doing risk assessment at each of the departments on a rotating basis. So for example, you could go to the town clerk one month, the next month you go to the fire department, the next month you maybe go to the police department. And what you would do really is look at how they handle cash, where do they keep it before they turn it over, how long do they keep it before they turn it over to the treasurer, how do they account for it. Like the clerk's office should have, um, say, a list of dog licenses numbered, say, 1 to 100, and if they're 10 bucks each, there should be $1,000 shown for dog licenses. So simple steps like that. And the good thing about that is you may not catch uh, any malicious activity, but it sends the philosophy to the departments that the town is being vigilant and, is, and does care about accountability and reconciliations and, and cash handling as a whole. So it's something that does require some time. It's probably, I would say, a couple of days a month out of, out of the month should be set aside to do something like this. And, and again, you do it on a rotating basis uh, during the year. So um, I mean, you just wake up in the morning and you read too many stories about this one stole $6,000 and this one stole 15000 And then you might get one where they stole $400,000. And that's the last thing anybody wants to wake up to that works in the town. It's like, oh, my day's not going to go well today because people are going to be calling, the blogs are going to be going crazy. And uh, so it's good to really do things like this uh, as a prevention against fraud. And in, again, through the chair, this is, it's not up to our auditors to detect the fraud. Obviously, you're going to tell us if we have issues in our system, our right. internal control system, right. but your audit is not a fraud audit. Okay. The next item is something a lot of towns just avoid, but it is getting better. Um, towns out there are starting to think about other post-employment benefits. It's a big liability that's out there. Uh, that's, it, it's very similar to your pension, only the only difference is your pension is being funded. Your other post-employment benefits are not being funded currently. So um, I know the town is not in a great financial position now, so it's a difficult thing to think about. But what we talked about in the other room is at least create a plan on how to address this. Do we, do we address this once the pension has been fully funded somewhere out in 2032 and we divert that, those funds to the OPEB at that time? Uh, do we do little dollars now and then do that? But some sort of plan. I think a group needs to get together and I think the group that was in yeah. that room yeah. is an excellent starting point. On, um, on doing some things with OPEP. Yeah, I think the plan will be set aside smaller amounts now and then when the, the pension is fully funded, that would be move all that money towards it. Okay, and the next and item if is... If I could, Tony, sorry. And again, just to put numbers on it, um, I can see in the financials, that's $13.6 million. That's, that's a big... I mean, it's a third of what the pension is, right. but yeah. it's a big number. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's this thing they call kicking the can down the road um, that, you know, we're not going to be around when it finally happens, but that's doing a disservice to the people that are going to be walking in your footsteps, you know, years down the road, 10, 15 years down the road, <coughs> and Doug will probably still be here. But, uh, a lot of us will be gone. Uh, a lot of us will be gone by then. And, um, you know, and, and what's going to happen is it's just going to pop up and say, oh, wow, look at all this. Look at this, what we got to right. pay. And then it becomes a stress on the taxpayers. So it's something to just start to think about. Uh, the next one is uh, there's a new requirement under the single audit. And what a single audit is, is any time a town receives over $750,000 in federal funds, it's required to have an additional audit in addition to your financial statement audit. And the town goes well over 750,000, so you do qualify for the single audit. There's a requirement that your internal controls need to be documented. And uh, those should be done either through the Green Book or COSO. So uh, we're gonna help the town do some of this, especially on the school side. So hopefully some of this will get taken care of.
Okay, on page seven, we have uh, the material weakness. So like I said, there were six last year, there's one this year, this is the one that remains, which is the insurance plan. I left this as a material weakness because it was still pretty much being done the same way during 17, and it's, it's an item that just has a lot uh, going on with it to get it corrected. Um, I did hear some, some, some news that might help, but um, it is uh, something that, um, that the town is addressing. Uh, obviously, you gotta go back and forth with the unions on this, and it looks like the town is under much better control of this than it has been in the last two years. So, um, I don't know if you have yeah. So, real quick, we appropriated three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars at the October town meeting, uh, which increased the town's uh, funding or equity in the health trust fund, uh, and then currently negotiating with the unions, and they've agreed to uh, turn over their equity in the fund to the town in exchange for not moving to the group insurance commission uh, as of January first, two thousand nineteen. So, uh, when that's all finalized, that'll put this fund. Uh, Actually, the town will probably have more equity than the employees in it. Uh, one thing we, I mean, all this didn't come up until the fiscal year had already started. So for fiscal year 19, we'll do, we'll have two separate accounts to track the, the employee and the employer <coughs> portion of it. So that'll eliminate this issue going forward. So capital projects, this is a continuance from last year. Like I said, the MSBA issue was resolved. Um, we went through, and this wasn't gonna get resolved overnight because it was very messy. Uh, but there, we've listed out here the accounts that didn't have any, any activity or very little activity. And there are both deficit accounts and, um, and surplus accounts. And we had recommended that where you have surpluses, if you can repurpose them, to cure the deficits, that's something you should do. Uh, if you can figure out why they're deficits and you need to borrow, that's something you should do. Uh, so I know that the, the Kinsheriff team that's in helping the town right now has gone through a lot of this and it's gonna take some town meeting action to clear up some of this, so it probably won't be um, fixed this year, but it, there'll at least be a very good path on how it's going to be fixed. Yeah, so I think there's 58 capital accounts and only 12 are active. Uh, so we've gone through all those. There's only one that we still have a few questions that we need to figure out. Um, some of them, we, we didn't get our reimbursements from the SFR loans, or we didn't initially borrow enough. Uh, so we will make those borrowings to clean them all out. And then hopefully between the small deficits and the small surpluses, it's a, almost a wash. So we'll have to do that. We don't have a special town meeting before October. We'll be at the October town meeting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, receivable reconciliations. Like I said, most of this has been cleaned up. It was a material weakness in the past. Uh, we've reduced it to a regular finding. There is a handful of items left. Um, the two biggest that I'd like to see resolved at some point are the tax title variants. Uh, and the um, and someone needs to come up with a detailed list of foreclosed properties. There's, we, no one's been able to produce one yet. There's a balance on the general ledger. So, um, so this is something that those two items need to be addressed. And uh, it's not a material weakness because you've gotten most of the reconciling issues done, but it's important to address those two items. Any questions on that? Okay, policies and procedures we talked about, that was uh, resolved last month when you folks had uh, adopted policies, and uh, that's no longer an issue. Uh, appointing and combining the treasurer collector, I understand there was a meeting in October that, and there was t some town meeting action to approve uh, the appointment of the two positions, and there'll be a ballot vote in May uh, if that goes, if that's successful, it's anticipated, this is anticipated to take place in May of 2020 after the terms are up. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, there's an item on payroll, it's about $28,000. Uh, 
It's been the same amount every year for at least the last three years. I just recommend that that gets written off to the tax recap uh, on the next one as a deficit. That way, uh, rather than trying to go back to the 2005 and six, trying to figure out what it is. Uh, the transfer station management contract was uh, put out competitively, and as a result, uh, it's the same. It's the same vendor. Only the town will be receiving twenty-five thousand dollars a year. <coughs> Special revenue accounts. So these are gifts, donations, uh, revolving funds, grants, uh, things you've received over the years that through, through transition, uh, through time, they've kind of been lost. So um, you, get, you get money for a specific purpose, say $10,000, and you spend nine, and there's a thousand left. And it just stays in the GL. What I'm suggesting here is, and there's a lot of those, they add up to, there's uh, 60, 57, totaling $266,000 that have surpluses. And there's 11 that total $6,697 that have deficits. My suggestion is for the new town account to just go through these with uh, the department heads and determine if they know what they're for. Um, spend them for that purpose. Uh, if not, um, it's basically make an entry and, uh, and bring those back to, uh, back to free cash. And again, these are made up, there's, there's 57 that make up 266. So you can see the average of these is, is under $5,000 each. They're very, very small items. But they add up to a big number. So hopefully um, that's something that gets done uh, shortly. Uh, there were some special revenue deficits, uh, not the stagnant ones, but some real deficits that total about, well, there was 455,000, 270 came in after year end, which left about, um, about $180,000, which was made up of chapter 90. And we believe that's come in as of now. Yeah. Uh, then a police 9-11 grant and another police item, which is SWCC for 23,000. So my recommendation was, let's make sure the chapter 9085 came in. And on the other two, which are more confusing, is to really go through the activity and see if there's a real deficit there or if those are covered by subsequent receipts from the state. It also, over in the trust fund, there's three deficits that total about $118,000 uh, that uh, are all police uh, fund deficits. So someone, I, the new town account really needs to sit down with the police department and go through some of these deficit accounts and see if they can figure them out, <coughs> and, as well as the police details that we talked about earlier. So there is some work there to be done between the accounting office and the um, and the police, um, and Doug, you should probably involve, be involved in that process too. Police details we talked about. Let's go down to Title V. There's $106,000 left in a Title V account. Uh, Randy informed me the last time a lot of septic happened in town was over 20 years ago. So uh, this is free and clear money that you can, be, that you can use to pay down, pay down MCWT debt. So that'd be good to use in the budget process. Uh, Tony, um, so title, that, that comment, 106,000 for the title five and the next one you're just about to talk about. We could use that money to address if any of the special assessments were, were paid but spent out. Uh, does that make sense? No. No, I can't do that. No. SOAR, SOAR and septic are two different things. So a different family. True. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's the same to us. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah. But special assessments, so what happened is years ago you did your special assessments, put your SOAR system in and you did all your tie-ins. Um, so you built out your SOAR system. You built the customers of the system. Um, that money came in, but
but it came in commingled with everything else where it should have been segregated and said, okay, this is gonna be paid in the future for the debt that the town incurred and this is the piece from operations. It should have been broken out, it was never broken out. It's all in the same pot. When it all goes in the same pot, what happens is you tend to appropriate from that pot for salaries, supplies, and other things. So you eat into the piece that was supposed to be getting saved for debt by accident. So someone needs to go through and do an analysis to see if you're gonna run out of the money that it's gonna take to pay off this debt in the future and plan how that's gonna happen. Because if you are gonna run out, you may end up having rate shock in the future on your uh, sewer rates. If you plan it out, you may be able to do it over a period of time and, and, and bring it in for a, a, a smooth landing. But someone needs to go through that analysis to figure out exactly what the extent of the problem is. Any questions on that? Uh, then under the tax collection process, we notice that the town has a lot of tax titles. And uh, under Mass General Law, the town is allowed to uh, assign these through a competitive bid process. And the one stipulation is that, that the bidder has to pay all the outstanding taxes, all the penalties, and all the interest. That's the lowest the bid can be. So you wouldn't lose any money on this. Um, and the good thing about it is once you bid it, they write you a check. And you're done. You don't have to go through a legal process. You don't have to go through a, uh, an auction and all that. They take on all those rights. And it's a quick... Uh, it's a quick little hit of money into the general fund. Um, I know uh, Doug had um, had someone come in for a demonstration or a conference. Yeah. So I know it's something that's out there. There are differences of opinion on, on how that should work. But it's an easy way to collect a lot of money that's owed uh, without having to do a lot of legwork. And um, I suggest the town continue to evaluate that. Tony, and through the chair, um, just a question for Doug, if you happen to know, is there a lot of money here, like, you know, from two years and older? Is it a couple hundred thousand dollars? Is it? Yeah. Um, I know you have to probably age them a little bit, so right. you would, might not do anything that's six months old, but it's maybe a year and older. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure the dollar amounts, but most of it is, is way back uh, for several years because, yeah, we wouldn't do anything in the last couple of years because there's a good chance that we could collect that on our own. Uh, but anything older than a few years. But it could be probably seven hundred thousand dollars. I would guess. It's yeah. up there. Yeah, it's, it's up there. Jimmy, you don't recall the amount, do you? If we sold all those tax titles, I taking out the unknowns and stuff. But, um, what I have left is probably from two point eight million down to about one point four. It's a big number. It's a big number. Yeah, it's a big number. That would definitely be worth shopping out. Yeah, and, I mean, she they pay us 100%, so right. whoever we choose will get the same amount from, but we can. Right. And then they become active, which is important. Yeah, they, right, and then, yeah, going they forward. Own, they own it, and going forward, they have get to the pay taxes. every year. Yeah. So you get a double hit mm -hmm. there. Double benefit, right. Double benefit, yeah. And then the final comment, which is the only comment uh, isolated to 17 that we looked at, although it probably existed in 16, we just didn't uh, get a chance to look at it, was just the cash handling down at the Recreation Department. Um, there's really uh, very little accountability down there. Um, some of the cash is used, um, it looks like, to purchase things rather than going through the warrant process. So uh, yeah, there's, uh, just, there's really not a lot of controls around uh, cash handling for different events and things that are happening. So hopefully, um, hopefully the new director uh, that took over in October of 18 uh, is going to put a lot of things in place to correct to correct these yeah. things. And, uh, right, so before it was all volunteers, so we'd send out the cash box and it would come back and the tally of what they sold versus what was in the cash box was like $4 off and like it was $4 like every time. It was like, what's going on here? Uh, so that's something that Carol has already started and uh, the past few events have all reconciled perfectly so I, I think this is not going to be an issue going forward. And this wasn't a, a huge amount of money coming through there, like no, we're talking no, no. $10,000 or something, oh, no, or I mean, less than that. I mean, this is like 
Yeah, it's tens it's, it's, of dollars. Yeah, we're not talking about yeah big numbers. But this is and this is a, an example of what we talked about doing these risk assessments at the beginning. That's a great example of the town accountant going down to a department like that and observing what they do and taking notes and then making a recommendation. So, um, so again, that's uh, again not a lot of dollars, but it's good to get out to the department and just make sure everyone's uh, honest and, and doing their thing. Any uh, any question? Because that concludes my comments and presentation for the night. <coughs> Again, through the chairman, it, it seemed as though you know the audits have gone very well. I know it was when you first began the first audit, coming becoming the new auditors. Um, literally, all hell was breaking loose. It seemed, yeah. um, but it seems to be going very, very smoothly now. And a very good relationship, back and forth between, you know, your your uh, firm and the town. So thank you for yep. your efforts. Yeah, and I think uh, with the new accountant Tim coming on. Be, being a former municipal auditor, I think uh, you'll be very pleased. You'll speak the same language. And it, it sounds it. Yeah, it sounds it. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you in a couple months. <laughs> right. Next item on the agenda, we have three abatement requests. Good evening. I'll just let you take it. So. Okay. Um, three abatement requests were submitted for the last billing cycle. We'll start. Uh, the first one is 44 Wickham Street. Uh, we had a high water bill that we placed a door hanger on. The owner of the rental property contacted us. We went through the property, did a, an audit, found that they had a leaking toilet. The um, property owner said the toilet was fixed and repaired. Um, however, since the water went through the meter and uh, through the toilet into the sewer system, recommend that the uh, abatement request be denied. What is the pressure of the board? Recommend that uh, we follow Mr. the woods. Um, uphold the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to uphold the recommendation of the water superintendent to deny the abatement. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, just a question. This is one toilet yes. that we're aware of? Yes. So I'd maybe just a, a good note for the public that, you know, this, the extra amount of money was $500 over a quarter yes. for one leaking toilet. So it's just, it, pretty, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of big, <laughs> a lot of running water. Especially those big old ones. They, it's a lot of water going through. Any other discussion? Oh. Hearing no other discussion, generally, you the board? Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dove Gibby? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Joel Yes. Okay. All right, the second request is from 15 Tracy Court. Um, Owner of the rental property states there was a first pipe in the unoccupied portion of the basement, uh, flooded the basement. The uh, water service has been shut off, or that part of the line has been shut off because it's unoccupied, and uh, it will be fixed when they get a renter in there. The normal consumption uh, is typically 100 cubic feet, and in this case, the leak was uh, 3,300 cubic feet. Since the water went through the meter, the, the water abatement does, does not apply, but they are uh, requesting an abatement on the <coughs> sewer portion of the bill, so they do not go into the sewer system. So moved. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uphold the finding of the water system <coughs> to abate the sewer portion of the bill. Any other discussion? Hearing other discussion, generally, Board. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dubkevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolder? Yes. All right. The third and final abatement request is 3 Sean Lane. Um, they had a high water bill. We went to do a door hanger. While we were there, we uh, met with the tenant of the, the trailer, and he identified low pressure. So we went around and did a leak check. And even <coughs> as soon as they walked around the building, they heard water flowing underneath the trailer. Uh, turns out a line had frozen after the meter before it went into the trailer. So that was uh, turned off and fixed. So their typical 1,200 cubic feet per quarter bill turned into a 13,000 cubic
cubic feet um, bill and that water went to the ground so recommended that the sewer portion of the bill be abated. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to abate the sewer. Abate the sewer portion of the bill for the water superintendent. Any other discussion? Yeah, just uh, that was on three, Sean Lane? Yes. No. Okay. It says disapproved. Yeah. It doesn't say anything about it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the, the super superintendent, uh, he did check the disapprove, <laughs> uh, but he was not available today to double check. We think that was on accident, and it did just go into the ground. No, so the water operator looked, and the, the, ten, or the renter crawled underneath the, the trailer and turned off the water, right. so it went right to the ground. It just says Yeah, he, he did, right, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, generally before the board. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dovgevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolda? Yes. Thanks. And Mr. Chairman, while we have Mr. Woods on the hot seat, uh, he has uh, prepared a presentation. We've talked about uh, updating the board on uh, the water distribution plan and uh, what we see as capital improvements going forward. So if we can do that now. Uh, yes, absolutely. All right. You I'll, I'll click for you. All right, yeah. so Doug asked me to give a quick um, water distribution improvement um, update. So, go ahead, Doug. So, basically, I'll uh, touch on several things. I'm going to talk about briefly the, the dirty water complaints, the frequency and location of those, uh, the, cap the goals of the capital improvement plan, what we have planned for this coming uh, year, as well as long term plans, uh, how those plans will impact our budget and <coughs> ultimately impact the customer. So this is the map that uh, the consultant Fine Bond put together for 2015, the dirty water complaints. The, the lighter colored circles are single complaints. Darker colors is uh, multiple complaints from the same location. The takeaway from this that, you know, that's no news to you is majority of the complaints come from the older residential portion of the town. We get very few complaints on the eastern side of the lake, the southern side, um, a few up on the northern, but essentially it's the downtown uh, residential section of the, uh, the town that has the most dirty water complaints. Yeah, and you said this was 2015, which was the worst year for dirty water calls. Correct. <clears throat> As um, this graph will show, this is the total monthly dirty water calls uh, all the way back to 2014. You can see we have a number of high spikes there associated with disturbances in the water system. Typically it's flushing, uh, we had sprinkler tests, the mill fire uh, occurred in there, ice picking. But for the most part, we get about 20 to 30 calls per month, and what this graph doesn't really show is that the number of calls per uh, year, uh, of days of call. In this case, we could have a, um, something occur in the system, we could get 10 calls in one day, and that is the majority of the calls for the month. So this is on a monthly basis, but overall, um, you know, uh, the number of days that we get calls, I think is decreasing. That would be the next level of um, insight into looking into the data. Right, and also, you know, obviously they peak every time we flush, so people <laughs> ask, so why do you flush? Uh, I mean, if we didn't flush, uh, the issue would be much, much worse going forward. So we flush it to get it all out through the hydrant system rather than coming through everyone's kitchen sink. So obviously, uh, if we don't flush the system, it's not coming out on the streets, it's coming out in everyone's homes. Correct. Through the chair. Yes. Just a, a question. Um, is it mandatory that we flush? Is there a, is there a DEP requirement? Is this just good at practice? One point, at is one it point it was required up through 2015, but now it's no longer required. It's not mandated, but it is an industry standard oh. that um, flush to minimize the, for those reasons. So it's a good practice correct. to do it the twice right. a year? At, at, least, at least once a year, and in our case, twice a year. I still think it's, it's a valuable um, tool. Thank you. This is more state it's not just oh yeah state. every town flushes every, every yeah. town flushes at no, least once talking about the dirty water oh, yeah. Yeah. i was watching the news the other day and there was a town out towards boston the same problem correct, correct. Okay. so the goals of the capital improvement threefold the first is we just have an old distribution system um, half of 50 percent of the system is online cast iron as you're aware and that means that the iron is in touch with the water and forms rust tuberculation but um, more importantly, about 25% of the system is over 90 years old. Now, there's no direct correlation that age equals 
uh, or there's a structural problem with these pipes, but um, any type of in infrastructure that's 90 years old is getting towards the tail end of its life cycle. Uh, second goal would be to improve the fire flows as that percolation um, encroaches onto the pipe that decreases the effective diameter of the pipe, inhibiting fire flows. Um, part of the goal would be to get clean these pipes or replace with new pipes to increase fire flow in certain portions of the town. And then lastly, to help improve the water quality. As you're aware, the, the, the treatment plant is, um, has started. The, the contractor was out there two weeks ago. They broke ground and started digging the foundation. That will take care of a, a significant portion of the dirty water cause, but um, in this case, there you have legacy manganese and iron that is in those tubercules, and if a piece falls off, it only takes a couple spoonfuls of this stuff to really make the whole street dirty water. So that's, those are the, the, the three-pronged approach of why we uh, are pursuing this capital improvement. So speaking of the tuberculation, this is an example of two pipes that were cut out of town um, last year. Um, and I put red circles there that, to show where the interface of the existing pipe is. And then you can see the tuberculation work its way in. Um, and what you can see is on the left-hand side, uh, um, about a half an inch of tuberculation has encroached on that. And actually about at the three o'clock position, you can see a pretty good tubercule. And that's about an inch. So our eight inch pipe is effectively seven inches and sometimes even down to six inches. So that really inhibits the amount of flow that, that goes through the pipe. And the same thing with the, the pipe over there on Goddard Street. What would, excuse me again, through the chair, what would the ages of these pipes be? I do not, I did not oh, research I that. But uh, the, they're probably, 70 to 90 years old at least. So, and you, and you can see in some cases, the wall thickness um, of, the, of the native pipe is fine, but all it takes is one of those tubercles to go through and poke a hole um, all the way through. So, again, just because they're 90 years old doesn't necessarily mean they're bad, but um, you can see what we're up against when you have unlined cast iron. Yeah. And I was excited to see that they fixed things like I do they, with some duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> the water main leaks, just throw some duct tape. Yeah, we on. have stock and duct tape. <clears throat> Thanks, Doug. Yep. All right. So basically, uh, with any type of rehabilitation project, there's two ways to do it. You um, can do pipe replacement on the right hand side there, uh, cut and fill. You know, it's pro pros to that is you can leave the existing system operating and you dig and put the new water main on the other side and make the connections. But it's very um, disturbing to the neighbors, very labor intensive. Another way to do it on the left hand side is to clean and reline those mains. Um, you would have to put a temporary water main between two hydrants and connect those houses to that temporary water main. Take the existing water main offline, dig two pits, dig down and run a scraper and a brush through that water main to remove that tuberculation, and then do some sort of lining. Um, typically, Mortar lining has been popular through the 80s and 90s. Essentially, they'll run a cone through that pipe and put a thin layer of mortar, and you're making a barrier between the water and the cast iron to prevent that future tuberculation. More recently, there's been a number of epoxy um, products that are um, safe for drinking water applications. The cure in place or the spray in place technology has been around for a, a number of years. It's used typically in sewer um, and storm drains, but now it has national um, NSF approval. So we would be looking at that, the spray in place, they pull a spray nozzle through once the main is cleaned and sprayed as epoxy um, on the interior surface. The, the cure in place, they'll drive a sock through and fill that sock up with hot water and it'll cause the epoxy to harden and essentially you have a, um, a new pipe. If I may, yep. excuse me, to, to the ahead. chair. Um, could we get from the clean and reline and the pipe replacement, they're both great, I, great tools, but the thing is, could we get some type of a cost analysis if we were to do either or? Yes, if we were to go out to bid. It's, it's very tough. A lot of communities have gone through this procedure, and it's tough to compare apples to apples because you can reuse some things with the clean and, um, clean and replace, uh, but you really have to say, we're going to replace 1,000 feet of pipe. Can you give me a price to do the dig? And, and installation or to come in and do a lining. And typically, the, most companies don't do both. It's, you'd have a contractor mm -hmm. to do the excavation, and then you have a specialty company that comes in and just does the lining. So um, there is about a 
lower cost to do the clean in place um, and reline versus open trenching. But it really depends on what you have for existing utilities, the, the, how populated the street is. If it's a, obviously it's a rural street, the cost will be pretty low, but if you're going through town with gas and other utilities, um, it can really drive up the price for the open trench. Yeah, and, and you also have trenches everywhere in your road right. pavement from then on. Which yeah. To look at Main Street, you'll see. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with, with the, the clean and reline, typically they're in anywhere between five and 700 feet apart. They'll put the, make a 10 foot long mm. pit and dig down and go through and line that section out there. So water main gates in there, they would have to be replaced. If there's a hydrant lateral, they would have to dig and put a normal junction right there. So sure, you can get 700 feet, but typically you have some sort of infrastructure that you'd have to replace in that stretch. So you have to dig down at that specific location, put in your T, and then you can continue from there. So again, just a technical question, Mr. Chairman. Um, so let's say you get the 700 of linear feet and you've got whatever, 20 houses mm -hmm. teed off of this 700 foot line. What happens to those teed okay. off houses as you're doing this process? Um, they're offline for that period of so time. They, so they you, would, you would have um, a temporary service above grade. You'd go from mm -hmm. fire hydrant to fire hydrant, the temporary main, and then yeah. they would be connected to that. But when they go through, if it's a cure in place, they have a little robot that goes through, and if this is where the service goes in your house, they, come, they know exactly where it's at, and they drill, okay. and Thank then you, you have um, access to the water service. The spray in place will just spray right across that orifice and not block it up. And they'll either blow it out with air or do something, but they send robots down with cameras to make sure that every single service is renewed. And they turn, I assume they turn the valve off? Probably, yeah, if in the house, they would turn the valve off. But that, that, that technically that service line would be de-energized or um, it would be off because they would connect the water service to like an outside spigot mm -hmm. and pressurize the house that way. So you wouldn't want the water to go out of the house back into right, the water right. main. Yeah, and assuming we do this, we would instruct everyone in, on how it's being Correct. done. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, there are companies that do this professionally and um, very, very methodical. Uh, one thing, when we add the epoxy, the epoxy can add structural uh, value to Yeah, the I was going to mention that on the next one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Steal my thunder. So this is a, a typical um, sales pitch. They have the, the uncleaned line um, water main on the left, and then this epoxy on the right, be it either sprayed or cured in place. These types of liners have um, various degrees of structural strength. The class one has no structural um, support. So if you were to dig these trenches and put mortar in there, mortar would make the barrier between the water and the iron, but wouldn't provide any rigidity to the, to the pipe. A class four, on the other hand, is a fully uh, independent structural liner. So that exterior pipe could corrode, degrade, and that liner inside has the strength, the tensile strength, and the, and, uh, the compression strength to hold the water, the water in there. So you could, with this relining of an epoxy, you could get another 60, 70 years out of uh, the lifespan of that pipe. So I, I don't see, like the, the, personally, I don't see the point of the, going through this whole process to put mortar in there that's not going to actually do anything to extend the life of the, of the, um, of the pipe itself. Yeah, I think, through the chair, the, the biggest concern would be, you know, with everyone talking about drinking plastic and having plastic in their food would be to make sure that the, the, these are all that NSF, is safe. NSF and uh, American Water Works, these all have met the drinking water standards. And it's actually, it's been in it's been in Europe for a, you know a decade or so more, and it's only just starting to make its inroads into the United States. So, um, for the immediate future, we had submitted a, a warrant article to spend uh, five hundred thousand dollars from retained earnings to do a, a demonstration product uh, project, either with a spray in place or cure in place. And we work with our consultant to get a, um, a bid spec out make sure that those um, vendors that are applying are going to be using a structural component. And um, Time Bond, our consultants, went through and did an asset um, management study and through, a hydro through fire flow tests and their hydraulic model have, have come up with the fire flows for almost every street in town and have ranked those based on um, age of pipe, break history, fire flows, water quality complaints, and have listed um, and prioritized those those streets for. So there are a number of, there's four streets right there that come in under the $500,000 um, retained earning spend expenditure that we're proposing, but there are a whole suite of streets that are longer than that and get above the 500000 so we could potentially do a, a shorter run of a longer 
street. Um, and, and again, this is a, a scale of economy, so the more streets you have, the lower the price per foot comes down. So this would, and is a, it's a relatively small project for, for those SIP and CIP processes. And the price per foot here would be nobody really is. Everyone's really hesitant to do it. Well, someone's got an estimate on the numbers. Well, that one must know that. Again, if it's a six-inch pipe versus yep. an eight-inch pipe or twelve-inch pipe, anywhere between one hundred and eighty dollars per foot to two hundred and thirty dollars per foot, something like along those lines. So, if you want to do a twelve-inch line, you run that yeah. doing a, short, a shorter yeah. run. Yeah. Um, and I said tie bond for future plans. They've laid out um, a very aggressive uh, replacement. A rehabilitation program, and I, I took a picture of the of the plan they gave us, where they highlight certain streets to be done in certain phases. Um, that's a really big chunk of money to do in one lump sum, but our goal would be to chip away at it in smaller um, smaller pieces. Most of it is going to be cleaning and relining of mains, but there's also some parts of town where the fire flows <coughs> where they should be, and they're recommending we install new pipe and upsize existing pipes, like up on Worcester Road, to um, increase connectivity with, well, station three and increased fire flows up there. So this is all written down. Good. <coughs> yeah, just a, a question on that. So one of the big things I think people are looking for is, you know, what's a five-year plan? You know, how much spend do we want to have in a particular year? Is it a million dollars a year, half that's, million a year? That's, that's two what, slides away. Okay, that's where sorry. we're getting to. <laughs> so so this, is, this is not a, 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 an expensive undertaking. So what I did with the help of Doug, Doug pulled together some spreadsheets for me of the existing debt and our revenue and so forth, and I went through and did some modeling of various scenarios. So I'm going to pr pr um, show you four different layouts here. One's our current budget projection. One is a, just a rate increase, and then we'd be able to do some projects to retain earnings, a capital fee increase, uh, again, projects to retain earnings, and then the last one is a combination of those two, at which point we would have enough money to do more larger projects through loans. So, so this is our current budget. And I'll just walk you through the columns real quick. The bottom uh, green is our operating costs. The burnt orange is salaries. We have capital funds in gray. And then mustard is the transfer to general fund. That top section there, the dark blue, is our existing debt. The red line is revenue. And the black line at the bottom, the diamonds, is the balance of our retained earnings. And then the bluish line with the squares is just a um, uh, industry standard on how the balance of our retained earnings should be. So that's um, $250,000. We don't want to necessarily go below. So what you'll see here is um, we had a 12% rate increase last year. So that bumped up our revenue. And FY19, we're going to have a little bit of a surplus. So that's why we're hoping in our retained earnings increase. So we're hoping to get that warrant article approved to do this project, but what I want to draw your attention to is we have a big increase in our existing debt starting in FY20, and that's when the bond for the treatment plant comes, comes in. So we have those three years, FY20, 21, and 22, we kind of have the hump, and then it kind of levels off afterwards. So whether we actually do any type of capital improvement, the water department somewhere down the road is going to need um, to adjust our rate structure or rates to get over that hump because as the retained earnings here, our revenues um, do not meet our expenses and we have to draw from the retained earnings and within three years we're out of um, money in the retained earnings. So the next scenario I ran <coughs> is a, just a, I just picked a 12% rate increase to match last year's and you can see our revenue jumps up to a little bit more than $3 million. It, it gets us above all but three of those um, existing debt columns there and boosts up our retained earnings and, and uh, would allow us to do two projects out of retained earnings over the next seven or eight years. Again, not a lot of extra money uh, around to do any type of system improvements with just a 12% increase. Uh, go ahead. And then um, I, I modeled some, some fees. A lot of departments and towns are now going towards fee-based revenue. It helps um, take the humps, the highs and lows out of the yearly revenue. If we had two wet summers in a row and our consumption went down during those, um, those quarters, that would put a hurt on our, on our revenue. So modeled a $20 quarterly fee that pushes our revenue up to about 3.1, gets us overall, but one of those um, fiscal 
obligations, but also opens, it puts more money into our retained earnings and allows, in this case, I just arbitrarily uh, picked years to get four of those smaller projects in. This is all just through retained earnings, no, no additional um, borrowing. And then the last um, Yeah, scenario. sorry, real quick. So when we talk about one of these projects, uh, I mean, that's only basically one street when we looked at the other, the four that you had listed before, it's almost a half a million dollars for each street. So that only fixes four streets. Yeah. And at the risk of asking if we have 70 something miles of pipe and maybe half of them need to be, maybe 25% of them, your number previously, needs to be replaced. Yeah. Is that the next slide? No, well, I mean, it's about a million dollars a mile, a little bit less than a million dollars a mile. That's Acton Water District just replaced just shy of two miles, and it was $1.8 million just for the construction part, not the engineering on top. So it's, it's um, like I said, Pine Bond laid this out in a very ambitious um, program. I think it was coming to 9 to $10 million, and that would be about 18% of our system would be re rehabilitated. Which is, you know, it's not a, doesn't go very far because it's not an inexpensive undertaking. So in this scenario, I just ran the twenty dollar uh, per quarter bill plus a two percent annual rate increase, and you can see the revenue jumps up, and then it continues to do that two percent increase that allows us to do some projects with retained earnings. But more importantly, in this case, I modeled three two million dollar loans spaced out every other year. I just um, ran that 2% increase through 2026. Technically, we could probably take that 2% off in 24 and have enough revenue to support future borrowing and expenses, but um, just, just ran those numbers. Uh, you want to add anything you want to mention to that? So this is, no, if we did all of this, that's what, maybe 12% of the system gets replaced? If, that, yeah. if that's only six, six million. Yeah. And again, with, with the economy of, of, of scale, if you can do $2 million project, if the contractors here, you can probably do some more streets, your, your cost per foot could go down because of mobilization and, and, uh, and if the person, the company that's on, that's retained to do the temporary water mains are here and so forth. So there is an economy of scale. So yeah. what I did is just I, um, on this last scenario, I ran what the impact would be to Customers, so, yeah. Yeah. so there you would see in the blue is the $80 per year um, flat uh, capital improvement fee and then a 2% increase on top of that. So uh, 2018 it would be $87 and it pretty much goes up seven to $8 <coughs> per year with that 2% increase. Um. <coughs> so in summary, the capital improvement plan, we're trying to tackle our aging infrastructure increased fire flow and re reduce our water quality concerns. Um, big takeaway is our current rate structure does not cover our existing debt service for the, um, for the treatment plant, so that will have to be addressed. But um, if we want to do any type of substantial improvements to the water system going forward, they'll have to be increased on top of um, to get over that three year hump ahead and then to be able to do um, some expenses going forward. And that's brief update of what we're looking at. So I'll, I'll go ahead and say that uh, this is the one that I'm recommending. Uh, it's, the, it's the only approach that actually provides enough funding to, for us to make a significant investment in uh, relining the 70 miles of mains that we have throughout town. Uh, it, and again, it, it, and only 50% of our system is unlined cast iron. So that other 50% has the mortar lining and it's not, it doesn't have water quality issues. It's really this, this residential part of town behind us where it's the unlined cast iron that's causing the tuberculation, the fire flow, and the water quality. Yeah. And, and we always have the ability to reassess this if uh, when the water filtration plant comes on, if, uh, if, if all of our water quality issues disappear, maybe we take a less aggressive approach. But mm -hmm. I, the fundamental is that we have a 25% uh, of our system is 90 years old and we kick it down the road as the gentleman before me said that's going to be a 100 year old system and unfortunately the uh, majority of the state everyone's just sitting back and waiting for a big pot of gold to land on their lap so they can um, support this type of project and then there are a bunch of other communities out there that are being more proactive and have this fee structure that 
okay, so the, the, the customers know that this $20, this $40 is going for the plant and for this, not for new trucks, not for uh, new air conditioning units, specifically for um, improvements that are helping the town. So <coughs> I, I don't think you can kick it down the road much farther until you have a substantial portion of the system that's um, needs to be completely replaced. I mean, through the chair, I mean, um, to me, unfortunately, this shows that we've kicked it down the road for a decade more than we should have. And I think, you know, the, you know, in the past, perhaps keeping the rates low was a great thing to have, but the expense of keeping the rates low is you don't do capital improvements and you end up with where you are now. I, I think if you switch back, Doug, there was a slide that went to 2022, one more back, and it showed the, the actual dollar impact. Um, I think it went from oh, 80, oh, the the last one. 80 to 120 of the numbers I happen to remember. One more. Which, okay, that one there. Yeah. So that, that 80 cumulative impact um, then going to um, 120, so a $40 increase or a 50% increase basically from 18 to 20, 2018 to 2022 <coughs> Is a 50 percent correct change, but again, we're we're having now to do things that you know maybe if we spent a little more money many years ago, we wouldn't have had to deal with all of it now. But and this only takes care of, I think you said 12 percent of the. And and like I said, if, if at some point if that those that two percent um, the rates probably should increase every year, whether it's two percent, one and a half percent, and you, we could modulate that. And and then we have what this doesn't show is in 2028, um, a fair amount of our debt service decreases. We we, we lose uh, or we free up like five hundred sixty thousand dollars in um, 2028. So therefore, you know, the, the revenue doesn't need to keep going up to support our debt services. There can be a ratcheting back with uh, some of these, but it, it will be a a little bit of a hurdle to get over the next few years just with existing. And I know we have to, as a board, talk more about it. But I, I think it was a great presentation, and it would be important to put this on the web. A lot of what we're talking about is getting communication out. And, and this is really, it's hard and it's impactful to see it. It hurts to see the dollars, but it's important to put it out there. Hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Uh, actually, before Greg leaves, so, yes. you know, he's only been here what, four <laughs> months now, three months. And, Feels you know, like he, a year. Yeah, he jumped in with both feet, and he's been doing a great job. So I really appreciate him, and uh, it's so nice to, it, I don't want to talk bad about the, any of our uh, engineers or consultants that we used in the past, but Greg's done a great job not having to use engineers and consultants to come up with a lot of this information. And I uh, really appreciate that and his hard work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Greg, if I, if through the chair, yes. just one little thing I was thinking about. Well, you showed four streets. Three of them almost run into one another. If you have a construction company there, wouldn't they give you a better rate if they have the oh, equipment? Oh, yes. And, uh, and again, I'm just going off the, the, the first okay. foot just, uh, just length, but that would be the goal is, okay, you're, you're here and, and there. Why move the equipment? Correct. Correct. Let's do this street and then we'll shoot down and we can mm. and spend up to the, to the dime. And try like to Nelson, Lincoln room. Street, Correct. Whitcomb Street as an example. Correct. Absolutely. And again, the, the numbers that Ty Von put into their um, spreadsheet are Probably no, no, I understand. So we could maybe stretch out some of this work with, um, with lower bids and then longer runs. As well. right. Again, through the chair, if you add those up, you're, you're around one point, a little over one point six million. You might get it for a million, two million, three. That's kind of the economies of scale you're talking Correct. about. But that's saying if you only spend a half a million, and of course your model only shows a rate impact of a half a million at, at that point. Here you'd have to try and budget triple that amount. Correct. Which would be. These are just being coming out of retained right. earnings. I mean, it makes sense bond. what Mr. Mill is saying Correct. to be efficient, um, but we're going to have to bite a, a bigger even, bullet. Correct. And that's why I, I modeled the $2 million loans. I mean, you could do $3 million, but that mm. really takes a big hit. Um, right. With, and two seemed reasonable. And again, this is just open for discussion. Uh, just me going through that you can have endless iterations of percent raised percent increases and fees to get what we want to do. But 
uh, you know, a two million dollar hit is um, pretty manageable, and you could get a fair amount done for that. Well, the key is to get clean water, more clean water to people, so Correct. and they get the best value, you know, bang for the buck, so to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a couple of things. I think, Jen, did you hand out a copy of it to everyone? So thank you for doing that. I wanted, and with that, to hand out this as well. And I'll discuss that as part of the report. Uh, so kind of a longer report, so I will skip over most of it, uh, but feel free to read it. Also, I have posted this on the web, and I put the link to it on our Facebook page, so everyone should be able to access this and have more information. We need another copy. Uh, first of all, town hall is closed next uh, Monday for Patriots Day. Uh, and a reminder that the last day to register to vote for the May election is next Tuesday, April 17th. Uh, the selectmen also received an invitation to the Bartlett High School Super Team Ceremony, so that's Tuesday, May 1st at 5 p.m. We have the town election coming up on May 7th, that's a Monday, and the Monday after is the town meeting. Uh, here in front, you can't see them, but uh, those watching TV can. So those are yard signs that are gonna be going out throughout town. If anyone listening uh, or anyone in the audience wants to place one of those in their yard to help us advertise town meeting, please let us know and they can be picked up in the collector's office, sorry, collector's, uh, clerk's office. All right, uh, so on the report, I'm gonna skip over to uh, item 1B, the opioid task force. Crystal Brown was a, an employee at the Worcester <coughs> County Sheriff's Office. She was uh, integral in our uh, opioid task force, so she would directly reach out to those people that had uh, recent overdoses and help connect them with available resources in the region. Uh, she's moved on, uh, so we will uh, be hopefully working with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, uh, she hopefully will be replaced and we can continue the program, but uh, that's it's kind of a big hit, and we just want to you know, go out and say that we appreciate all of her hard work. Uh, she was uh, a big moving factor in helping us reduce some of the opioid overdoses in the community over the past year, so we thank her for her work. Uh, last week, the Board of Health uh, voted to uh, adjust tobacco regulations for youth, so they have limited the number of tobacco permits to 25 in the community and they restricted flavored tobacco uh, to only adult use uh, stores as well as vape shops. So you won't be able to buy flavored tobacco at the, the local 7-Eleven. Uh, so we'll be sending out information to all the uh, local business owners so they're aware of it. Uh, these will go in effect July 1st. I think this is a, a good step to help our community. There's no need for us to be promoting tobacco to you know, underage smokers. I think it's a great move by the Board of Health. Uh, next up, I'm going to skip to the next page under events. On April 19th, uh, we're having a CPR class that's going to be held at 4 p.m. here. So anyone interested, that's open to the public as well. Right? Yes. Anyone can join that. So, and was it a $15 fee? 50. 50. Sorry, $50 fee. Uh, but you're welcome to come and uh, be trained in, on CPR. We have an Earth Day spring cleanup on Saturday, April 21st at 8 a.m. So they'll be picking up garbage, and there's going to be a pizza party after at 11 a.m. Uh, we have a tri-state firefighters meet at the beach on Saturday, May 20th. That's from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on June 7th at 5 p.m., the Lakeview Marine will be holding a Touch a Boat event at the beach. So uh, people can come and see boats from the marina, also the, the police and fire bus will be there as long as well as the Coast Guard. Uh, also, Carol has done a great job. She has a grant opportunity that will help pay for a youth sports program, so she's reviewing the possibility of getting the basketball program going. Uh, we also, on the agenda, have uh, speaking with Carol, so I'll go through the rest of the report and then we'll 
bring her up. We can talk to her about other events going on. Uh, under finances, uh, like uh, we mentioned earlier, the uh, for the health insurance, we negotiated with the unions to use the premium holiday to offset the budget for fiscal year 19. Uh, to not go into the GIC as of January 1st. Uh, as you're aware, we held a tri-committee meeting last week to talk about what the budget looks like going forward. Uh, those aren't uh, good numbers, so next year, if we stay status quo, uh, same growth as we have been experiencing, we're expecting a $1.2 million deficit, and that grows to $2 million by 2024. Uh, we discussed several options to address that, We'll begin to hold a meeting between the Finance Committee, the School Committee, and the Board of Selectmen in June. Uh, give you an update on some of our plans. I'm meeting with the School Superintendent and Business Manager tomorrow to uh, talk about how we're going to address that. Uh, tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Wednesday, we're going to the Municipal Finance Oversight Board at the state. Uh, it's a program that lets us uh, borrow at the state's bond rating uh, when we did a rough analysis. If we save 40 basis points on the $20 million or savings, that's, that's about $80,000 annually that we'll save. Uh, so that's a, a, a great move and uh, we appreciate the state passing that act so that we can use the, uh, that program. Uh, just this past week alone, the uh, tax collector's office, uh, sorry, the treasurer's office did the, uh, received over $78,000 in tax titles and foreclosures. Uh, so that was a great, great week for them. Uh, skipping down to economic development, uh, we applied for an opportunity zones program. So that's a program through the federal government when they passed the, the new tax bill uh, that uh, certain zones that are uh, low income can be designated opportunity zones. So <coughs> investment in there will have a lower tax uh, than otherwise. So we applied, uh, we have three zones that were eligible, we're only allowed to apply for two, so basically it was the, the downtown area and East Main Street. Uh, so if we get designated as one of those, we'll be more attractive to future developers that may want to come in uh, because their tax burden in the future will be less. Uh, also, item D under economic development, uh, we have drafted a, an economic development fund incentive and improvement program. Uh, so we are still working on uh, most of the details, but this is the general overview of what we'd like to do. So we'd like to go to town meeting, set aside a certain amount of funds uh, that we can use to uh, encourage future investment in the town. So it would be uh, one, we could offer grants to to businesses that would like to move into Webster and perhaps the moving cost and setting up some of the office environment would be prohibitive and they wouldn't be able to do that without uh, an incentive. Uh, so that would be one of the programs. Also a facade improvement program, uh, which uh, anything above $2,500 would be a 50% match from the owner, uh, which is similar to what the facade improvement program was uh, previously here in town that the, the CBBD office initiated. And another source, uh, another use of these funds would be for public projects in town that would promote economic development. So right now, we're looking at improving the parking lot on Davis Street uh, because uh, parking can be an issue during daytime hours. So uh, right now, it's several different owners hard to, uh, you know, because there are several different owners, the organization, the parking lot is very poor, and we fixed that and repaved, we can put in twice as many, maybe not twice as many, but we can a significant amount more of parking to help the businesses on Main Street. Uh, so this is uh, one of the items on the town meeting warrant to be funded. Uh, so if you have any questions, Feel free to reach out to me. We can talk about it now, or we can talk about it uh, offline as well. Uh, but I very much hope that this is supported at the town meeting. I think that would go a long way to help the town uh, improve the appearance of Main Street 
not only here in downtown, but along East Main, and it's not restricted to just any certain area. It can be anywhere that the, the allocation committee deems appropriate. Good through the chair. Yes. Uh, just uh, what amount are you looking to propose, Doug? Yeah. So I have funded in the town meeting uh, $135,000, and that is for the parking lot project that I just specifically mentioned, uh, and then it would be. The, the remainder could be for facade improvements or to assist businesses to move in. Thank you. Okay, uh, under maintaining infrastructure, uh, the, like Greg mentioned earlier, they broke ground for the water filtration plant. Uh, we will have a groundbreaking ceremony on Saturday, April 28th, so definitely please put that on the calendars. We hope you can all make it. Uh, and once that's uh, a little farther under construction, we'll put a Facebook page together so people can stay updated on what's going on down there. Also, we started flushing this week. Uh, so uh, like Greg mentioned, that's when we get a lot of the calls. We don't flush to cause people groundwater. We flush to resolve future groundwater issues. Um, and the zones are on, listed on the website. So if you have any questions about when your neighborhood is going to be Flush that'll be on there, and we'll have the house filter loan program that we discussed at the last meeting. That application will go live by the end of the week. Uh, in under infrastructure, the old senior center, we updated the lease that we talked about uh, at the last meeting with the Worcester Community Action Council, and the sheriff's office was kind enough to go in and remove a lot of the old debris that was in the building for us, uh, as well as uh, DPW was able to help clean up everything that was left over. Uh, a lot's been mentioned about Main Street and the, the trench that's on Main Street right now. Sorry. <laughs> so, no, it's fine. Uh, so we, National Grid, uh, dug the trench this past uh, fall and winter. Uh, they still have additional work to do on some of the laterals. Uh, when their work is done, we've teamed up with them, so rather than have them just, you know, the original plan was just to go three feet on each side of the trench and pave that. We didn't think that made much sense, so we're going to team together, use some of their funds, use some of our funds, and redo the entire Main Street. Uh, also, Lake Parkway is set for the Transportation Improvement Program that's going to be funded in 2020. We have a meeting on Wednesday. At CMRPC uh, will request that that be bumped up earlier, especially if some of the other projects on the list are not currently ready. Uh, and the last thing I want to mention under infrastructure is that Carol uh, wrote a grant and was able to receive $11,000 to build a pavilion at the beach. Uh, the only catch is that we have to crowdsource the rest of the $11,000. So. Uh, we'll be going out soon and pitching uh, to town residents to help us raise the other eleven thousand uh, dollars, and then the state uh, mass development program will pay for the rest of it. So we'll have a nice pavilion with picnic tables at the beach. Uh, let's see. Under delivery of services, uh, this past week we had a green communities breakfast uh, with the lieutenant governor, where she officially awarded us. $180,000, so uh, Jen's been carrying around a big check <laughs> for the last week Should have so. deposited. <laughs> they told us not to. So, it so that, that was an exciting event. And I mentioned that this report is now, it has been put on the town's website, but now we're pushing it out through Facebook to make it uh, more available for residents. And last thing, uh, we appointed one planning board associate member tonight, but there still is a vacancy, and we have a vacancy on the CMRPC commission, and we need a zoning board of appeals associate member and someone else for conservation commission. So anyone interested can apply online, and we would be more than happy to take your time volunteering. Are there any specific questions on this before we pull Carol up to talk about potential future events in town? Mr. Chairman, I did, I did have just uh, one question on the groundbreaking for the filtration plant. There was some concern if that was going to impact people's use of the walking track. 
Can the, you the clarify? The groundbreaking ceremony? Oh, the, the actual construction of it, sorry. Uh, it won't. So they are, they will have some staging area, but it won't overlap into no. the walking area. Uh, we, you know, we kind of made that a priority. That's very popular, so. Yeah, thank you. Motion to so approve moved. the second. Department. The motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, General Rule, call the board. Slugman Bork? Yes. Slugman Miller? Yes. Slugman Dovgevich? Yes. Slugman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolda? Yes. Come on up, Carol. So, uh, yeah. Chairman, for this, yes. I'm going to myself. Okay. Yes, and we invited Carol to the meeting so she could hear the auditor talk about the <laughs> recreation yes. department. And I'm going to go back downstairs and look for that $4. <laughs> uh, but uh, Carol's been on since October, is that right? November. 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 So uh, I've been very happy with Carol and her energy and enthusiasm. And she's already uh, started some new events, the uh, Christmas Bazaar. Uh, and uh, she moved to Winter Fire, made that more successful, and we just read a whole bunch of events that are going on. Uh, but we want to have a chance for the board to kind of give us some ideas, some feedback, maybe some priorities for uh, going forward in the future. I suppose I'm the reason why I hit a button. That's why we're staring at you. Is there anyone who can bring some like events, like car shows or something, to the downtown area where we block off streets and Similar to Putnam, or maybe in the carnival in the back, just oh, to bring more attention down to the main area of town. We could do it back in the Davis Street area. Um, my understanding is we can't do it on Main Street, because our neighbors, Dudley, need to use that if they have an emergency. Um, we have closed down the Main Street in the past, years ago. I mean, I can I yeah, remember when they came up. Uh, Church street and going around. Yeah, I mean, that's I, something we can look into. I can talk to the police and, you know, double check and see what the um, ramifications of that. Do you know how long ago? Well, it was years ago. Yeah. And was I still in diapers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not <the> Johnny paycheck. <laughs> it, it may be, if that is going to be an issue, we can do a sidewalk sale or something where we, we reduce, we eliminate parking for the afternoon and there's still space to do it. But uh, yeah, I think it's a great point to you know, have events down there because we do a lot of events at the beach, but bringing people to the beach doesn't help the local business owners here. Only that, that some people, they may not have vehicles where they can walk through the downtown. The yeah. seniors from uh, the senior housing yeah. can, can go down there. And I know in Putnam, they have huge uh, events on their main street. Yes. The car show is really big. Yes. They've got, a, they've got a different setup than us, though. They've got a well, we nice... We've got a nicer main street than that. We, we absolutely got a much right. nicer. But ours is long and straight, whereas theirs right. is like a block, you know, right. and um, square. They've got, you know, just logistically, it's a different setup. And I'm not against it, believe me. I, um, I'd throw a party on Main Street every weekend if we mm. could. But <laughs> it, um, I, I just have to check with the, the police there, the... Yeah, it's decided. And, and Webster UMass was one of the main concerns that yeah. that is the main ambulance route for anything on that side of the river. Yeah. So, uh, but that's something we can coordinate and try to figure out. And so that was one of one my, you know, maybe bring more attention to, to this yeah. area of town. Yeah. And for the winter, are we planning on doing more lights for the main street? Yeah. Not like three or four. Oh, okay. I got the wreath for you. <laughs> no, I, yeah. And we, Do we have electricity on those lights like uh, that we can plug into? So some of them we do. Uh, so they were put in at different times, so some of them have electricity. <coughs> but uh, I mean, we can put lights on some of the trees uh, going down Main Street. And actually those, I don't know if you need to turn them off when Christmas is over. Like in front of Santander, there's a whole bunch of trees. And, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the work that uh, Carol Sear has done, putting in trees along Davis Street as well. So uh, I can look for electricity off 
they also have battery powered LED ones now. Yeah, but, that's uh, true. They do have solar ones. Although we did that at the beach and they weren't not so good. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, maybe possibility of talking to owners on the main street to, to string, like you used to do banners across the street. Yeah. yeah. You know, Christmas mm -hmm. and maybe Santa Claus. And, yeah. And that sort of thing. Just to, you know. Christmas time, the town's always dead. It used to always have bazaars outside. I remember Jim Hedman had the <coughs> deers out here and Santa Claus. Yeah. We need to get back to that. Yeah. And uh, so, and Carol did the, the window contest for Valentine's Day. If we could yeah. and do the same thing for Christmas, but you know, hopefully Christmas is a little bit bigger and yeah. Yeah. make it a place that you know, people want to just stroll and look at the Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Actually, one of the things I, uh, I don't know I'm getting ideas, you should be worried. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they have those Christmas villages, maybe one of the vacant window fronts. We ask them if we can display some of those for yeah. the month of December or something like that. Mm -hmm. I always thought that the trees in, around the town hall were so beautiful yeah. that down in Florida, yeah. you go down the, the streets, they're all lit up, and they all have like these huge balls hanging that are all lit up, and yeah. it's just, very festive. And you remember when we used to have reindeer out front? That's why I was just. Yeah, Mr. Heatherman, yeah. You just said it two minutes ago, weren't you listening? Mr. Heatherman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I heard Mr. Heatherman, but I didn't hear the reindeer part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we should bring those back, Jim. Yeah. yeah. So, so the board is comfortable using money to buy Christmas stuff. Some people might not like to call them Christmas lights, but so we'll, we'll seasonal. Yes, well, I think we can say Christmas. Again. I'm I'm comfortable to say. <laughs> Just uh, I thought uh, Mr. Gavich mentioned the lights and working them off of our street lights while they're doing the replacement with the LEDs. Maybe that's something we can think about mm -hmm. if there's a way to make connections so that in the future it's easier to yeah. string lights. If uh, if I'm if I'm. We did do that. We put a brackets on. There was a separate committee that, that brought the funds up that bought decorations. And then they had basically outlets put in those poles mm -hmm. so they could be, you could do that every year. And of course, that all disappeared. And then you get the new lighting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, with the new LED lights, it gives an opportunity. They're going to be up on the pole anyway. Yeah. So if yeah. they need more or if they have to be replaced, yeah, it's a good time to do yeah. it. And, uh, so Price Chopper does, I mean, they don't have lights, but at Christmas time, holiday time, they have uh, Christmas is okay. uh, like tinsel stuff around their lights. And so tinsel stuff, tinsel, yeah. just tinsel. <laughs> <laughs> so we can put tinsel on the, the lights, if nothing else, and not light them up. But it would just be uh, nice to be more festive. Yeah. You know? Everyone complains that the town has three lights out. So I think you know. for the month of December, each one of you pick a week and play Santa walking up and down Main Street. <laughs> Don usually does that. I know. Yeah. He <laughs> makes a great Dylan. Santa. Want to yeah. make that in a Was that in the form of a motion? <laughs> uh, yeah. Do I hear a second? Yeah. Yeah. No. Mr. Ch yeah. Mr. Chairman, I, I know uh, Mr. Gevich is referencing more to Main Street, but um, you know the beach, one of the things I, I mentioned that Carol was maybe at kayak canoe race. I mean, they're very popular in Worcester and Lake Quinsig, and they can raise a good deal of money. Yeah. It takes some effort to do it, but I think once you do the first one, you can have an annual one after that. Right. Um, it's all, the first one is always the hardest. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, that was one thing, the farmer's market slash flea market mm -hmm. at, the, at the beach or mm -hmm. you know, Davis Street. You have that anyway. big parking lot, at least on the weekends, it's, yeah. it's wide Will open. It, we're doing it again this summer on Wednesdays in conjunction with the concerts. Just until, I think for the first couple of years anyway. Builds ahead of steam. Yeah. Exactly. You've got the captive audience there already to, to get it going. And then, then once it can stand on its own, we can either go on a different day or a different location. But it worked pretty well last year with the concerts. You know, I mean, uh, the vendors were happy. The people were happy. Um, it seemed to be a pretty good fit. So you get a fiery haircut, if I remember right. That was a different <laughs> event. That, one that was a different event. I have Randy. pictures of that one. <laughs> uh, speaking of the beach, one of the things that uh, we tried to do, which um, now may not so much possibility, 
but uh, we we talked to a vendor about coming in and doing a inflatable bouncy house uh, both on the water and on land. Uh, the vendor we were working with uh, probably won't work out, so we're at least not at this year. Options. He said it's just cost prohibitive this year for him to to get together. So, um, but he's not, you know, redlining Eddie uh, maybe next year. Okay. Now, I, I, again, through the chair, I've seen um, a few locations down south and even on a cruise once in the Caribbean where they had these playgrounds yeah. on the water with yeah. you know, all kinds of bouncing yeah. trampolines. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah, you have yeah, to be careful true. kids get hurt, too, so you've got to... Yeah, yeah. And, and our yeah. insurance company had some yeah, like ideas about that, too. You have another <laughs> company do it instead yeah. of it's exactly. on the town. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, and whereas our summers are so short, it makes it a little bit harder to recoup your money, yeah. so... It, yeah. uh, um, one of the other things we talked about is they have those inflatable screens and hold a, a drive-in maybe for a night or something, see how that goes. And yeah. If that's popular, maybe do it a couple times over the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for all your hard work today. Yes, appreciate <laughs> it. My pleasure. My pleasure. And anytime you get an idea, don't hesitate. You can call me here. You can call me downstairs. Or now you can just reconcile those cash boxes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna go get on that. You'll be our next policy and procedure on the. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Thank, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is the town administrator's review. So, I will. I guess I'll start us off. So, <laughs> uh, I guess I want to thank you. I. I think you're overly generous in uh, your scores that you gave me, but I appreciate the, the vote of confidence given to me. Uh, and especially this is my first job as a town administrator in my first year. Uh, there was definitely a learning curve, and there are some things that I look back now, and like, I probably should have handled that differently, but uh, hopefully I can learn from my mistakes and we can continue to move forward. I decided about continuing on here and I feel like we've got a, a great team, we've got great community members that are very willing to help support the town uh, and I have a very supportive board so I thank you for all that you've done, uh, especially you've, you've made it very easy for me, uh, especially as I've been transitioning uh, for my first time and uh, you've been accommodating uh, having less meetings a month uh, to help with some of my family <laughs> and I appreciate that a lot. As far as the actual scores, I probably would have scored myself you know, half a point lower. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, do, I do understand that no, I got, there's areas that I feel like I need to improve on as well, but I appreciate what you, the scores that you did give. Uh, I reviewed the comments as well, and I think they're, I think they're kind of, they're spot on. And hopefully we can continue to make progress as we go forward. Hi, Mr. Chair, I, I, I uh, thought it was certainly an improvement from the first one we had given you, which is only like six months at that time. It was like three, yeah. Oh, maybe three <laughs> months, yeah. You were, you were even much more wet behind the ears, so yeah. to say. Um, I, I appreciate all you've done. Um, to me, bringing the, you know, the, the people together in town hall, the one thing that you know I think maybe shows a little bit through here is maybe relying a little bit more on um, your department heads. I know that's one of the things I, I tried to jot down in my critiquing, but um, you know other than that, overall I, I've been very very pleased. And in fact, you know, Mr. Chairman, at some point in the next month or two, I think you know, uh, behoove the board to think about you know we've had a three-year contract because we didn't get to know we didn't know town administrator at the time and you know at some point we should talk about you know perhaps um, doing something with a five-year contract you know before we get too deep into the three-year so right. just uh, something we should think about any other questions or comments from the board members What do we do for a raise, Mr. Chairman? I'm, I, he has a contract. Uh, I'm not That's sure. That's not part of the agenda. I'm yeah. sorry. How this, yeah, how this relates? Yeah. So if I remember hmm? correctly, there was right. the first portion would have been the initial raise 
based upon the framework. We just and may want to bring that up on an agenda because yeah, I'm not sure contractually. The next, the yeah. next agenda. What's the step? So, uh, um, maybe I can save you the trouble. So I, I built in the budget, uh, the, the same cost of living adjustment for, I took the average of what all the unions got. Uh, so I built that into my salary for next year. Uh, so that's our. And ours too, I think, right? Yeah. I took we, the liberty. Is that so, something we should vote on as a board? So that, yeah, so that's in the contract. It's, it's, the contract, it states that it's like 1.8% of the cost like that. of the bank that the union um, is receiving. Any other questions or concerns from the board? If not, we will move on to signing of the warrant for the special town meeting on Monday, May 14th. So I will pass this out. Uh, the one I that was included in the packet uh, had not been fully reviewed by council. They hadn't finished their review of it. I don't think anything changed actually on the special. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chair, do you want this read or do you want me to just review it? Um, you can review it. Okay, so, uh, Article 1 is to hear reports. Articles 2, 3, and 4 are to have prior year bills for the general fund, uh, water fund, and sewer fund. Uh, Article 5 is to fund the deficit of snow and ice, which uh, right now is looking at 175000 uh, By the time the meeting comes, we'll have a firm number. Hopefully, we can make some adjustments within the operating budget to decrease that. But right now, I have $175,000 as a placeholder. Article 6 is to fund cleanup of compost in uncapped landfill area as required by the DEP. So uh, I think I mentioned this last time that when they were building solar fill on the landfill, they ran into some uh, uncapped refuse that will either need to be capped or dug out and hauled away. Uh, probably hauling it away is the cheaper option, uh, but I'm setting aside $200,000 for that from free cash. Uh, that's somewhat of a wild guess. Uh, we've been meeting with DEP, uh, but we don't, we haven't dug the test pits, so we don't know how much refuse is actually there that needs to be removed. Uh, or, so. uh, Article 7 is to adjust the uh, budget to account for uh, debt service payments that were not budgeted for fiscal year was, uh, the budget was prepared last year. So any questions on the special town meeting? Or? No. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, sorry, just uh, on the uh, landfill, is that's not something that was caused by the installation of the, this was just happened to be just, there and shouldn't have been there. They found it because okay. they were installed. Just didn't know. Around. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one thing, the, uh, we have the Municipal Modernization Act that was passed uh, year and a half ago, that allows the finance committee and with approval by the board of selectmen to make transfers within the operating budget the last two months of the fiscal year. Uh, so there are transfers that will need to be, take place and we'll have to review those later on. Uh, but typically those had to be done well, at a town meeting more previous. <coughs> they do not need to be, so hopefully you'll support me when we vote that. At a future board selection. That's all for the special. If you yeah. on that. And is, is it the this copy that we're signing? Or is Jen, uh, Jen has a non vote Okay, so John, uh, Jen has the copy yeah. that we're signing. Okay. Did you already vote? Sorry. I'll make a motion that we, we accept the uh, special. All right, there's a motion and a second to accept the special town meeting warrant for May 14th, 2018. Any other discussion? Hearing no discussion, Jen, will you call the board? Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dovgevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolda? Yes. All right, next item on the agenda is the annual town meeting warrant for May 14, 2018. Yeah, so this one, I think there were some actual changes from what was sent out over the weekend. Uh, 
So I'll review each of these articles. Uh, first is to hear any reports. Second is to pass the annual budget. Uh, council actually had some suggestions for changing this, but it's been like this forever, so maybe next year we can change it. But, uh, it it's fine as is. Articles three and four are to fund the sewer and water budgets. Uh, Article five is to allow the treasurer to make any borrowings to uh, within the fiscal year if there uh, were any shortcomings or we needed to do any ban. <coughs> So Article 6 is a transfer of $100,000 to the Stabilization Fund. Uh, later on, one of the articles uh, is to transfer the proceeds from the sale of the Filmer Building to the Stabilization Fund as well. Uh, article 7 uh, is, um, all right, so this is to allow our revolving funds. The, again, this was a change with the Municipal Modernization Act. If we uh, make this, make it a bylaw now, we won't ever have to, in the future, we only have to redo the uh, amounts, which is the second half of Article 7. So Article 7 is to uh, make these revolving funds for bylaw, and then the second half is to put in a spending limit for each of those. Uh, Article 8 is uh, to fund the capital budget. So those are the items that would be paid for. Uh, the plan is to pay for these through free cash right now. Uh, Article 9 uh, is to fund the water department sewer budget, uh, which includes the $500,000 we talked about, plus uh, $35,000 for roof repairs that they need done. Uh, Article 10 is <coughs> to, we have the money coming in from the solar landfill that is uh, to be used for the town hall stabilization. So that would be taking that money and appropriating it to the town hall capital account. Uh, Article 11 is to appropriate $20,000 in free cash uh, to OPEB. Uh, Article 12 is to fund $135,000 uh, for the economic development plan and incentive programs. 13 is, oh, uh, so currently when we borrow money, we get a premium. Uh, that premium was general fund revenue. Now uh, we'd like to use that premium to pay down the balance of the debt. So that allows us to do that. Uh, article 14 is to uh, sell uh, 41 East Main, the Thelma building, and allow either the board is like or me to uh, uh, sign the documents to allow that to happen. And actually, when the, when council reviewed this, they didn't review the other article to uh, transfer the money from stabilization to, uh, the proceeds to stabilization. So I will read that and we can hopefully approve it as men to put that on it, if that makes sense. So I'll read that one at the end. Uh, Article 15 is to allow the town to uh, let the selectmen enter into a five-year agreement to operate a marina at the beach. Right now, we're limited to only three years. The It will not be profitable within three years, so this will allow us to spread out their costs over five years. Uh, Article 16 and 17 is entering in a pilot agreement for two solar uh, fields that are going in. Uh, page 6. Article 18 is to prohibit the public consumption of marijuana. Uh, this is actually now state law as well, so um, it would just make it a local ordinance as well. Uh, it does have a $300 uh, fine for any offense. Uh, Article 19 is submitted by the school department to fund improvements to the outside of their new administration offices. Article 20 is a, a capital exclusion of $600,000 to purchase uh, a fire truck that will replace engine five and ladder two. So a capital exclusion is somewhat different. I don't know if the town's ever done one. So uh, well, there's debt exclusions where you pay the debt over the life of the bond. Uh, but a capital exclusion is out above the two and a half levy limit, uh, but it's all paid within one year. 
Okay, so it's a temporary it's just earmark. A, it's basically a one-year override no. just for that piece of equipment. So uh, when I ran the numbers for the median household, it was, I think, $73 uh, for uh, 250000 uh, dollar home, it would be a ninety-eight dollar uh, assessment for one year uh, to fund the truck. Uh, what we did not want to do is put debt in the future onto our budget uh, because it's already uh, difficult to pay for those in the future years. Uh, our and Article Twenty-One is a citizens' petition to uh, rezone a certain area of the, I believe it's the cemetery. To uh, a business so. and I will let me read the, the other article that I'd like to add on for the uh, uh, for the disposition of the building. If there's any questions while I look that up, I can answer those. Yes. Mr. Chairman, just on, on Article Three and Four, I'm just curious how with water and sewer, with you know, setting of rates and stuff, and the timing of the vote with the ch new charter, does with the sewer and water commission, how does that? Yeah, so we would uh, set the, uh, typically we set the rates before town meeting. Uh, so we would hold a meeting before our town meeting to set the rates mm -hmm. uh, as the board of selectmen. And then next year, it would be the water sewer commissioners so even though, even though, let's say it passes, even though it passes on May 7th, that's what the timing gets kind of funny. So oh, we're, right, we're gonna, right, because it would be a commission. Right, so then you'd the have to appoint, to right, yeah. you'd have to appoint a commission, wouldn't we? Would we be able to do that, or are you saying we wouldn't do it? I don't know what the provisions within the transition period, how they work. I don't know if Earl, if you know. One year beyond the approval, the Okay, thank you. So we set them for one year. Yes. Thank you. This article in right after uh, allowing the town to sell Fillmore Street. So, uh, to see if the town will vote to overturn the Second Amendment of Article 10 of the May 12, 2014 annual town meeting that was postponed to June 16, 2014, that required the town to sell the present administration building at 41 East Main and use the proceeds to pay down the debt for the construction of the school administrative <coughs> offices in the high school and instead appropriate the proceeds from the disposition of the sale of the administration building at 41 East Main to the stabilization fund, less debt service costs for the fiscal year 19 budget. So that's the, the so, amendment that you're gonna be reading? Yeah. Oh. So, no, I, I would actually, I would like that to be added as an article. Because it was in your original one you sent us. Yeah, and. It just didn't have a sponsor, so you're yeah. gonna be the sponsor on it? Yeah. So, approve it. Uh, as amended tonight, and I will add that on the final document. Well, was the uh, the article that you just read that was included on the warrant that was closed, correct, at the last meeting? No, the the warrant that was closed at the last meeting was just the uh, ballot. Okay. So we're setting the warrant right now, so we okay. can change it. Right, so just we'll, that it, it it showed on our initial draft okay. that we got over the weekend. Yeah, but and not it wasn't here. Not the one from council. Okay. So that's why you're reading it. Yep. Second, so Mr. Miller's motion. Second, any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, general report board. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dovgevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolda? Yes. Right, next item on the agenda is the discussion on the status of the seasonal all alcohol license for capital Unions. Uh, so, let me pull that up. Okay. Again, here, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself from this. Do you want to leave? Okay. Uh, so, the uh, Capolini's. Actually, Jen, do you want to help me out here? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. So, Capolini's received a special act to go over the town's quota and receive an all alcohol license. Uh, by town meeting vote in 2016. At the time that they 
received permission, they still have to come back to the town and apply for that license. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that they just get it. They never came back to the town and applied for that license, though they were aware that that was a step that they needed to take. They have a year-round wine and cordials license, and they have a seasonal all-alcohol license. I mailed out their packet when they picked up their, their license, their annual license this year, it clearly says wine and cordials. Uh, when I mailed out their packet to renew their, an, their seasonal all alcohol license, I sent it out certified at the beginning of March and I didn't get anything back, which is why I asked that you vote the renewal of the license contingent on my receiving all of the information and I didn't receive anything. So. I called the manager and she said that she has an all alcohol annual license. And I explained to her that she does not. And it was not a very pleasant conversation. So Courtney, who was here at the time um, that this special act went through and had explained to her many times that she needed to come forward and apply for that annual all alcohol license, spoke with her as well. Um, but as of now, even after speaking with her today, she has not returned a signed uh, renewal for her all alcohol seasonal license. I have to report back to the ABCC whether or not she has renewed that license, which was due by April 1st. So just for clarification, the, there's no such, the, the all alcohol seasonal is different from a year round all alcohol. Completely and the, different. And the special act of legislation, just so I'm understanding correctly, was to give them all alcohol year round, right. which would have triggered applying for the full alcohol year round. Yes, yeah. so she could have gotten rid of the two licenses right. that she has and just had an all year round. And there's no time limit on when she can apply for that. We called the state to ask that specifically and told her that you can still come forward and apply for that all alcohol license. It's going to take right. a while, three months maybe, but in the meantime, renew your seasonal. Maybe by the time, by the, time the season's over, you should have that year round right. license. She hasn't come forward. She knows I have a signed receipt that it was received mm -hmm. at Capolini's. I don't have a signed renewal form from her that I need to send to the ABCC as proof that she has acknowledged and uh, that she has signed for the all alcohol seasonal license. She hasn't picked up the license. She hasn't paid for the license. She hasn't provided the necessary documentation to go along with the renewal and I need to report back to the ABCC. So through the chair, so is she running, is that she, she has an illegal license right now? Yeah, she has a wine and cordials license. And that's all she, she should be serving. Correct. correct, but she's claiming she has an all alcohol. So I reported that to the state well, because I did receive a complaint from another right. business owner that yeah, she is functioning right. as though she has an all alcohol license. Right. So I did um, call and report her to the Investigations Bureau at the Alcohol Beverages Control Commission, because once I'm made aware of that, that's, that's what I have to do. So they will investigate that. In the meantime, she could be serving all the alcohol. She just has to come in and sign her form and pick up her, her license. You voted it contingent upon right. receiving the documents, Correct. but we are way past April 1st and she's been made aware multiple times through multiple conversations with Courtney and I. Um, she claims she didn't get the packet. It was signed by someone that works at the restaurant. Um, there's nothing more that I can do. My responsibility now is to report back to the state the status of this license, the seasonal license. It's, if she wants it back, she can get it back. But I'm, I have to turn it into them. Correct. So then at this point for, from the board for the action. She, it, she can't be serving right. full liquor. She can no. serve beer right. and wine. Right. Right. She can serve, yeah, beer and, yeah. Yeah, beer and wine. wine. She cordial, so she can serve some, some liquor, but limited. She can't right. serve like a straight shot of vodka. 
you know, that kind of thing, which is what, you know, she's arg she argued with me that she could, but then after talking to Courtney, she realized she never completed the, st the next step after the special act, which she knew she had to. She didn't. She just acted as though she did and went forward and started serving as if she did. And then when the business owner came forward and said to me, I was there, I saw this, this is what she's serving, then that triggered my call to the uh, investigations department at the ABCC. So, through the chair, what's going to happen? This is going to come back and bite us for not doing what we're supposed to do. Right? No. She's done what she's supposed to do. She didn't do what she was supposed right. to do. Right. No, what I'm saying is it'll come back and make it look like we didn't do what we supposed to do. That's why you have to do what you need to do. Does that make sense? No. We all need to do what we need to do. <laughs> right. Exactly. So she, you she, signed a license. Owner, she's supposed to do what she's supposed to do. Right. You signed a license that said she can serve year round uh, wine and cordials. Right. That's what her license says. That's what her license has always said. Just because she got the special act, that didn't change anything. That's the license that you signed. That's what she's always had. She went ahead and arbitrarily decided to start serving all alcohol once that special act came through without going through the process of applying to the board to get that license changed over to all alcohol so annual. this has been going on since 2016 yes that she's been serving illegally um Wrong. this business owner just came forward to me but courtney reminded her after this special act uh was received multiple times and Courtney has the emails to back it up don't forget you have to come in you have to apply this doesn't make it automatic you need to come forward and at some point Courtney just said you know I can't chase you either you want it or you don't well, it's not too November late 28 of 2016 yeah so I mean even on the other it. side there's an email from Courtney on the flip side of that but We've both spoken oh, with her. Yeah, it's been approved. You have to come in and do the full paper. And that's mm -hmm. one in multiple. And that was on December 21st of yeah. 2016 at 204. So, you know, she, she had an argument with me, um, you know, with profanity used, you know, accusing me of all kinds of, I was wrong. And we have the documentation. We're correct in what we're saying. No one should be treated that way. It was, it was very yeah. bad. Does it was very right. bad. Does warrant asking Attorney Corvo, who's from KP, to draft a letter to the business owner, certify mail, kind of Right, yeah, as like a cease and desist, like do Correct. not be serving, you but cannot serve all alcohol. Just have someone serve it. I mean, bring it down to her. Can we, we can serve it by a constable, right. but right. as of right so now, it. she cannot serve all alcohol. She has not met the requirements of renewing her seasonal license, and that is what I need to report to the ABCC. So then I would have a letter drafted by Attorney Corvo, a season assist. Yeah, and ABC is aware. I haven't made them aware until tonight. I wanted to make sure, I wanted a vote by the board that that's what they would like me, that's what you're directing me to do. I would further, I would make the motion that we we contact the attorney and have them send a constable with the letter immediately. Correct, to avoid it. Any further issues? Okay, we will do that. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah, okay. second. Have a motion, second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, Jen, will you pull the board? Selectman yes. Bork, Selectman Miller, yes. Selectman Dovgevich, yes. Selectman Becker. He recused. Oh, but, oh, sorry, Chairman Jolda. Yes. Can I clarify that um, that? it's okay for me to report to the ABCC tomorrow that she has not renewed her seasonal Correct. license. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jen. Thank, Thank you. you. Next item on the agenda is the quarterly <coughs> financial review. So in January, we gave a quarterly review for the first half of the fiscal year. Uh, now after the third quarter, uh, it's almost exactly the same, the same deficits, same areas we're looking at surpluses. Uh, one area that slightly changed is we have our uh, part-time evening custodian uh, is, is uh, very, very ill and has not been to work for several months. So a lot of his shifts have been picked up on overtime by other staff. So that, uh, that initial overtime money has been spent and that's in a deficit. So we will need to address that somehow. But uh, other than that, basically the same issues as identified before uh, and same <laughs> solutions as before. So any 
specific questions on this? Okay. All right, moving on. Next item is the quarterly department review. Uh, so this is something new we'd like to do is uh, give the board an update on each department, what they've done and accomplished in the last quarter. Uh, it's, it's a little bit long, so I will try to skip over the details, but uh, only give the highlights. Uh, so uh, first of all, the assessor's office uh, had our, their largest excise commitment of over 14,000 bills, uh, over $1.5 million. Uh, Board of Health, as we discussed earlier, recently passed uh, the Youth Access Tobacco Regulations. Um, and the building inspector recently sent out five demo letters. We're following up on those on uh, properties that uh, are dilapidated. And they initiate a viewpoint. I think that actually started December 1st. There are a few kinks. They've worked those out. It's working pretty well. Uh, so now anyone can apply for a building permit, any building licenses or permits online, and uh, hopefully that will lessen the traffic in the office. The town planner uh, is working on 10 applications. Uh, town planner has also done a lot of work with the website uh, in making town planner information available on the website for uh, anyone interested in that. Conservation, uh, last week we developed, we, sorry, last month we passed their new fee schedule. That's one thing that they've been working on. Um, uh, IT, uh, we launched the new website in February. Uh, Greg did a great job training everyone on doing that, uh, supporting everyone, and he's also been very busy. The library order, you know, there was a 70 computers, uh, and so he's going to be installing those himself at the library. He's a very busy man, and we appreciate him, so thank you, Greg. <laughs> the Office of Community Development, uh, we, uh, they bid out the Dresser Street uh, reconstruction project, so that will be happening. Uh, actually, construction was scheduled to start today. Uh, we applied for the CDBG grant to do phase three of the Riverwalk, so that would be the uh, kind of plaza area at the bridge that goes over to Dudley behind the Montfrey building. Uh, and for the 16 CDBG grant, uh, the Tracy Court and Davis Street extension improvements were completed and housing rehab for six units. Uh, the tax collector did over 14,000 uh, motor vehicle excise bills. So uh, this first quarter of the 2018 is a very busy time for them because they have all the motor vehicle, they have a lot of the uh, the regular real estate taxes are due as well, so it's been a busy office. Uh, town clerk uh, certified for the local elections. Uh, also, they've been uh, working on the annual town report. Uh, the treasurer's office continues to do great work on tax title and foreclosures. So in the past quarter, they brought in $384,000. Uh, so that money will be available once free cash is certified uh, after the end of the fiscal year. The fire department got a foam trailer uh, that they purchased from Virginia and uh, with the, the purchase of the trailer and some of the donated goods uh, saved the taxpayers about $80,000. Uh, the chief is also working on a regional dive team with some of our surrounding communities uh, and they did a ISO, the insurance services office, uh, so they go out and look at the uh, the ability of us, of our fire department to put out fires and they scored very well on that. Uh, so that is great work on their behalf. Um, the police department, uh, we had two officers retire, uh, Brody and Netarazic. Uh, we continue to uh, go through the process of hiring replacements for other officers uh, from vacant positions that we had already. Uh, the work with the opioid task force continues. They had a uh, opioid awareness meeting at the high school uh, back in January. They had, I forgot, someone from the Attorney General's office came. Uh, and we had a, a boat donated uh, from the environmental police for the uh, lake. So we have that small little uh, police boat. We now have a much, much larger one. 
That's great. We actually have two boats that we received from them. Something that a rowboat won't outrun. Yes. And, uh, in fact, it might be a little too big, but uh, don't tell anyone that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the highway department obviously had a lot of snow to deal with, especially some of the un for unexpected snow in March. Uh, Kenny says there were 19 storm fronts with 48 inches of snow. Uh, so uh, now is obviously pothole season, so they've been doing a great job uh, filling those. Again, we want to reiterate, please report those. We actually will go out and fill them if you let us know they're there. Uh, the water department, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Greg has done a great job jumping in and uh, just figuring out what's going on and how to move us forward. Uh, and I appreciate his work on developing uh, the plan to make that happen. Uh, the sewer department, they've replaced a couple of pumps. They did that in-house, saving a lot of money. Uh, the, they've also completed an asset management plan. Uh, and the, the federal government's requiring us to do an inflow and infiltration uh, assessment. So how much water is seeking into our sewer system. Uh, so we're going through that process now to figure that out, see where the worst areas are, and uh, eventually fix those so we're not uh, treating groundwater. Uh, the senior center uh, had served almost 1,300 lunches over the past quarter. Uh, they continue to offer their exercise classes and uh, other uh, classes. They do a, a, a combined effort with Christopher Heights to serve soup. Uh, and yeah, the library continues uh, to uh, develop and get ready for the new opening of the library. Uh, they have received two council, cultural council grants for programming. So one is a magic program and the other is a paint program. And the recreation department, we talked with Carol already, I got some of hers, uh, but they held the winter fire event, uh, which was here locally. I think that helped the, some of the local area businesses and appreciate her hard work. So that's the report. Going forward, is this something that the board finds useful? Do you Absolutely. want yes. yep. any format changes that would make it more useful? I like it broken out by department. It makes it very easy yeah. to follow and it's consistent. <coughs> All right, great. Next item is the review of current dog licensing fees. Uh, so in the packet, we have uh, the dog license fees, and ours are currently $6 for spayed or neutered dogs, and for non spayed or neutered, it's 10 uh, I recommend we go to 15 and 20 for those. Uh, it's not... Uh, it's a little bit on the higher side, but uh, we, when we analyzed all of our potential fees and uh, ability to raise additional revenue. This was one area that uh, we thought was an appropriate place. Uh, so. So moved. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, discussion, I think. Go right ahead. Effective. Uh, July 1st. Yeah, and I can see that the recommended fees are in line a majority of the surrounding communities in yeah. the area. Any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, Jen, will you call the board? Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dubkevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolda? Yes. Next item is a one day alcohol license request from the Sacred Heart of Jesus Parish for a banquet to be held on. April 21st, 2018, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So, There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? And Jen, you received a complete application for Yes. Perfect. It should be right behind uh -huh. um, Deputy Shaw's uh -huh. comments. Perfect. Right. Hearing no other discussion, Jen, will you pull the board? Sleppin Bork? Yes. Sleppin Miller? Yes. Sleppin Dovkevich? Yes. Sleppin Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolda? Yes. Next item on the agenda is a request for a one day alcohol license for the Kilder Island Club for an island block party on 
June 6th, 9th, 2018, from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. So moved. Second. Right, we have a motion to second. Any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, Jenny on the board. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dove Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolton? Yes. It looks like they have two requests. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. One is an outdoor event. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, great. So the next item on the agenda is a one day alcohol permit request from Kilgore Island Club for a Kentucky Derby party on. June 9th, 2018, from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. No, that's um, May 5th? May 5th. Oh, May 5th, all right. Yeah. The agenda. Well, so moved. All right, so, so All right, we have a motion and second. Any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, Jen, will you hold the board? Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dove Givich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolda? Yes. Next item on the agenda is a request for a reappointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals from Mr. Mark Mason. So moved. So moved. Second. Yeah. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. this discussion, generally for the board. Slepman Bork? Yes. Slepman Miller? Yes. Slepman Dovgivich? Yes. Slepman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolder? Yes. Okay. And seeing no other agenda items, we have a Motion to adjourn. So moved, move. Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Any other discussion? Hearing no discussion, generally for the board. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dovkevich? Yes. Selectman Becker? Yes. Chairman Jolta? Yes.